Yeah. Recording. Yeah, sure. Welcome to the OSRS podcast where we talk to RuneScape content creators, JMods, and even XJMods about RuneScape related content. I'm one of your hosts, Mitman Cow, followed by. What's going on, boys? Rex as always. And hello, it's me, Rice Cup. So today we have a very, very special guest, uh, Mr. Xmon Mad K, one of the most prolific J mods for Old School RuneScape. You know, we can call him the stats man because he used to be all about that during his, you know, special live streams. But yeah, he um, was many things, but he was mostly a product manager, I believe, for Old School RuneScape. And he would be leading a lot of kind of like the controversial questions and debates of Old School RuneScape during the early years. So yeah, whenever something sketchy or, you know, uh, confusing was popping up for the community, he'd be the one to usually tell us, you know, here's the facts, you know kind of thing so but yeah definitely very influential and it's nice to see the man back here to you know tell us all about whatever about you know his previous work and maybe his current work about uh yeah games in general so and runescape of course thanks very much for having me guys really really mm -hmm. appreciate being here amongst such illustrious company as you three I'm uh, wow. I'll take it, <laughs> I'll take I'll it too, it, man. Hey, thanks for the host that one time, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you got so, hosted? That's sick. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Matt. Maybe like what, twice, what, actually. Matt, what are you currently up to then? Because obviously you're an XJ mod now. Yeah. Uh, the company that you now work for, is it in the gaming industry or is it completely different? It's um no, it's not really in the gaming industry, although um it, it kind of is a bit. So what I currently do, I do the same job. So I'm sort of product manager, but I do it for um, a deep tech company rather than a gaming company that creates technology for lots of different people to use. And I was brought in to manage the simulation side of things. So um, what we do, this is going to get incredibly technical very quickly. So I apologize for anyone uh, straight away. Um, mm -hmm. What we do is we work with um, supercomputers and distributed uh, compute in the cloud, which effectively allows us to create massive simulations by distributing them across multiple machines in the cloud, bringing more machines so you can make massive simulations. Uh, use cases in gaming are things such as imagine RuneScape world, but with 10,000 people in it. You remember uh, the days when, um, what was his name, Ice Poseidon used to oh. crash servers by getting everybody to spam an email <laughs> at the same my time. Boy, my boy, Paul, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. With the Nino. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice guy, real nice guy. Um, uh, every time I'm in um, in Los Angeles, he always sort of calls me up and says, "You'll come for a beer," but I've always been too scared to. Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah. So when when that happens, what our technology would do is it allow the uh, the world just to just scale up and cope with that, so nothing would happen. And you could put sit, sit you know hundreds of millions of people into a single RuneScape world if you wanted to. Although it probably wouldn't be a very fun game to play, but that's what the technology allows. Current people we're working with is Minecraft, for example. We're working uh, to get a million users into a Minecraft world. We also work with Microsoft on that, um, which wow. is quite exciting. Um, what else? Um, we've, uh, we hold the record for the most amount of players in a single um, PvP battle, which was 11,000, I think. Jeez, uh, I wish I was. What game, what game is that for? That was uh, we worked with Eve Online to uh, to do that. Ah, that's what it was going to be. I thought that mm -hmm. was it. Yeah. Um, what else have we done? Oh, all sorts of stuff. We worked with AstraZeneca and uh, Imperial College London um, right at the very beginning of the COVID uh, crisis to use the technology to create how um, COVID infected lungs, because we can make massively detailed simulations at a cellular level as well. So we worked with those guys to help them identify how they how. Uh, how they could make a vaccine to combat it as well. So we've, we, we're not just in the one area of games, we're in that. Uh, can do um, anything. Yeah, anything that requires a simulation. Could you um, uh, could you guys maybe work with Jagex sometime? Because whenever <laughs> I go in a world with more than 300 people, my ping is terrible. I can't yeah. kill half the bosses I want to. <laughs> I don't even think it could hold a 1,000, let alone 1,100 people in one battle. My yeah. God. It, maybe it's just because like we're so used now to doing like prayer flicking and becoming like a tick manipulate like genius maybe yeah. we just notice it more now because i remember playing on like world 2 when there was like 2000 players and i i don't remember it being as bad as what it is now so i don't, I don't know if it's just because we Are require you... more now like a lower ping or something yeah. 
Are you talking about like way back in the day, World 2? Yeah, like way back in the day. Well, I know, you know it was why? bad, but it's because yeah. we had AOL. That's why, man. Everything felt like World 2. We couldn't tell <laughs> the difference. It was just AOL and the dude run in, you hear the dial up. Of course, we couldn't tell the difference there. That, that um, is very, by, very true. By the way, Matt, you're talking about <clears throat> supercomputers, which almost, I mean, dude, your job now sounds like a, a major upgrade from RuneScape. But it's I, I was. Quite different, yeah. Yeah. Quite different. He says he's different. See, not not that oh. it's superior. <laughs> but I, you know, I, I listen to TED Talk sometimes, and I heard about quantum computers. But what is a supercomputer? If you don't mind me asking. So, supercomputer is imagine you have okay. So um, forget about a computer and what a computer is. Uh, you're worried about your processing unit. So if yeah, you have a whole life is lying. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so the way I explain it to my mum is every time your computer does something, it runs a process. Uh, and this process is, is run by a processor. And the more processes you want to run at the same time requires the more processes. And you get to a point where there's no more processes left on your computer. Now, in a supercomputer, they link all these computers real close, right up next to each other. So you get more and more processes, uh, processes to process this information, uh, which means you can process more information faster um, at the same time or uh, what have you. Um, the different difficulty with supercomputers is the actual time it takes for the information to get from one processor to the next becomes your limiting factor, which is obviously the speed of light. <laughs> so the speed of light turns out to be the limiting factor of how quickly you can process stuff. Yeah. So the way we do it instead is we use computers on the cloud and then manage the communication between them in order to process more information faster, but using more computers. Because as soon as you start building a physical computer, you, you run out of space very quickly. And there's only certain, very few places in the world that actually have computers big enough to solve some of the big problems. But on the cloud, there's 100 million times more computers than the supercomputer buildings. Damn, I, I just uh, cannot even wrap my mind around it. It reminds me of like torrenting and, some, and stuff. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> pretty much it, I'd imagine. Have you, I know it's not nothing to do with RuneScape, but have you ever heard of quantum computing as well, right? I, heard of it. I don't know. I, I couldn't tell you much about it, but I, I have no, heard of it. Yeah, I, I couldn't either. I, I barely understood cloud computing, let alone quantum <laughs> computing. Oh my god, that's crazy. Yeah, that's some that's some crazy technology though to like branch to so many computers and kind of like yeah. use all their processing power. You know, he like, starts that's... from a game that requires four pixels to run. To <laughs> <laughs> he's mapping out lungs at the cellular cellular yeah. level here. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you had a pretty crazy. Sorry. Sorry. You can go. Yeah, my, my 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 career has changed massively from a game which runs in twenty year old tech to uh, technology that hasn't even been invented yet, which is what we're working on brand new stuff that no one's solved before. So, that's, that's that's kind of, so these computers on the clouds. I'm trying to wrap my head around this. Educate me. Um, where are these computers? Like, where are they? I'm guessing they're physical computers just around the world, all connected, or? How does yeah, that work? data centers. So, for example, you'd have your Amazon data centers that are scattered around the world with banks of computers in them and banks of servers in them. And you same with your Microsoft ones and your Google ones and your uh, Oracle ones and your um, whatever else out there there is. Um, but effectively, there, there's there's millions of these computers just lying in data centers all over the place, rigged up, and you can rent them. If you go to Azure, uh, which is the Microsoft one, you can just go and rent a computer <coughs> from them. And it just rents you a server that's in a data center somewhere. You can do things. Oh wow, with it. that's really interesting. I damn. Well, that makes sense. Thank you. Because when you say clouds, computer in the clouds, I'm just like, yeah, me it's, it's some I sort just, of wizardry. Oh. I don't get it. <laughs> you I'm thinking of like, computers. I'm thinking of that <laughs> iCloud leak where you see Jennifer Lawrence. You know what I mean? That's that's where my brain went. I'm like, what? <laughs> what you Did mean? you hack other people's computers? <laughs> Is that what you? Were <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Tom, I think it's time for sellout time. Do you do you think that's appropriate? Yeah, now? yeah, let's uh, yeah, we should have done it, it earlier. We should have done it earlier after I I uh you know, did so the, how many how here. many likes how many likes are we thinking, man? What's a worthy number for this podcast? Well, Mod so Mac A, the legend himself. Yeah, at least this is a big one. Matt, for you to go back to Jagex and fix PvP, how many likes does this podcast <laughs> need to get? Oh dear! What? How many likes does this podcast normally get? Like, well, let's just say we usually we usually get like four hundred, five hundred. I think. With yeah. some, if some if we beg for likes, if, if the pitch is good, we'll get four or five hundred. Okay. But you're you're legendary, so it, you probably expect more. Yeah, give yourself yeah, so room if, to grow. If we say seven fifty, 
Okay. And if, if it gets past a thousand, not only will I fix PvP. You may write a blog first. I'll I'll yeah. fix botting as well. Why not? Oh, what about oh, points? Damn. Yo, let's go. The return, <laughs> let's fix it all. The return to form. All right, boys. Seven fifty likes on this podcast. <laughs> tell your friends. Tell the bots. They're going, man. And, Feels good. Thank you, Matt. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Matt will fix our problems. Um, yeah. Speaking of RuneScape, man, <laughs> I just got to know, while you're working there, was there ever a super crazy day that stands out? You know, example, maybe like... With Many Rod, days. Like, Rod DDoS to DevMMO tournaments, and you gave the money to charity, or something like that. I don't know. Any crazy days? Oh, blimey. Um, crazy days. You can give us top top two if there's too many. Well, the problem is there's, there's loads of them. So let's think. That's yeah. There's so many. I things of note. The day that I probably remember the most was the day when the membership from um, old school overtook the membership from Rootscape Three. Uh, we could see we were getting closer yeah. and closer. So, yeah. And and it happened, and I had to sit there, and I, we weren't allowed to say anything because people were worried that we would start upsetting the rest of uh, rest of Jagex by saying, "Oh, we're now the bigger game." Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, like, was... I can imagine, <laughs> right? You have a staff of like a hundred people on on RuneScape, and then and you have like five, old five of you guys just sitting on a small room, like it's like a club. Yeah. Yeah. Thing, bigger numbers. They're just though. they're just sat there like smoking <laughs> cigars, just like saying <laughs> not a word. <laughs> that, was, that was pretty much it. I think I called uh, I called Ash over. I can't if Dan was with us at the time as well. Anyway, I called the team over, sort of. Surreptitiously, so nobody would notice. Yeah. Sort of Mr. Screen. Ferrari over there. And it's, it's just these big grins and it's all like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. God, that's brilliant. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's great. So, do you miss um, do you miss the pub? I know there's a pub in Jagex. I don't know if you used it a lot, but I always wanted to go I, try it. I didn't. I mean, the, the canteen was nice and the pub was part of the canteen. Um, I, I rarely used it because um, I had to drive into the office all the time. It sort of takes mm. away from. Uh, Having to uh, uh, having a pub there, which you know, I never, not obviously, not a drink driver. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so I, I rarely used it, and most of the time, I never went to the canteen. I was carrying on working through my lunch because there was always so much to do. Um, I got you. So yeah, it was a case of you know, you turn up for work at nine o'clock in the morning, you work solidly through without stopping until until just after six, and then uh, then head home. And, was uh, it active? What, like, would you walk by and there'd be JMOS there, or is it pretty empty because of uh, the work? Um, so you wouldn't get JMOS in the pub halfway through the day. There'd be certain key times where they'd have, you know, beer Fridays or beer payday beer, where every every payday you'd go down there, grab a beer, smile politely, talk to a few people, <laughs> eat some of the uh, free nibbles that were around, and disappear as quickly as possible. Um, but other than that, there generally wasn't people in there. I think Friday nights were the only time it really got used because people didn't have to come into work on a Monday. Mm -hmm. I was just weird, man. Yeah, there were strict rules as well. The licensing rules in the UK are, are pretty strict. So um, part of the rules as well was that you couldn't have alcohol in any other place in the building other than in the uh, pub <clears throat> area. Ah, so uh, you could have it at your desks or anything else. Um, oh, you know, yeah. uh, and even, yeah. you couldn't even bring it in yourself. Um, because that was against the licensing rules, so you couldn't, you know, go to go to uh, uh, Tesco's at lunchtime, buy a bottle of vodka, and keep it under your desk. That wasn't. <laughs> uh, I imagine that would cause some uh, disruptions. You know, in, we'd have yeah, some really good updates. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> maybe, Matt, hey, maybe that's where the Tebow came from, bro. The Tebow bush. Uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe. So uh, Matt, if you want to know where that came from, yeah, go I, for it. I can tell you where that came from. It's, it's, it's a hilarious story. The poor guy who did it absolutely gutted, and uh, I felt sorry for him, but it's, looking back on it, it's hilarious. Um, and what happened was we had a new um, artist start, and uh, one of the old artists said, right, okay, here's something that you should never, ever do. So while she was being trained, um, or he, I can't remember who actually the new artist was, um, uh, while, while they were being trained, here's what you should never, ever do. and started spamming the world with T-Bows. And... Uh, and say, so, because if you do that and accidentally leave one map down, it will appear in the main game and people will uh, will pick it up. Then he <laughs> went and deleted them all, or so he thought. Um, um, and that that update happened, and the the world got the uh, map got dragged into the world, and then the update happened, and then that that uh, bow appeared 
Uh, is that the twisted so, bush? <laughs> yeah, it's the twisted bush. Yeah. Right. Ah, and, uh, my goodness, that's hilarious. Yeah. I mean, so, I mean, what we did straight after that was we created a, a piece of software that will go through and check the value of everything that's on the ground, and there'll just be uh, a quick report so that uh, if a mistake like that had happened, it would get flagged up before anything got uploaded onto the main servers. Um, we should have existed anyway. Uh, really. Exactly. But, yeah. Until that moment I'm happens. You don't really think about it. You know, for yeah. such a long time, right? People were like speculating, like, is mm -hmm. this part of a real world trading operation that's been going yeah. on by Jagex this whole time? And we just never knew about it because they never messed up until today, you know? Like, I remember people were doing that conspiracy theory, in it, you know? <laughs> Nothing like a good conspiracy theory. Yeah. So you're I saying that's so not true. They, there's no <laughs> hidden operation, huh? No, but I would publicly say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. is it is it was it a similar um mistake then for the max cash glitch if you remember that one, with one it was there was a glitch where somehow yeah. you killed somebody in the wilderness or pvp worlds you would just get like a max cash deck or something it, like. it was to do with if they had an untradeable that dropped for like a certain amount like barrow gloves if you killed someone for barrow gloves you'd get like 60k and for some reason that cash stack turned into max cash <laughs> I don't know yeah. if you were working there at the time for that. I think I coin think pouch update makes the coin pouch update. I'm trying to I'm trying to remember how that one came about, but I think that one was um, uh, it was a coding problem as opposed to a mapping problem. Certainly, mm -hmm. it's a different sort of problem, but it was an honest mistake which never got picked up. Um, mm -hmm. Unless you look for these things, can't really pick them up. Yeah. Um, all the cool stuff happens when I'm sleeping, man. That kind of sucks that I'm American and I wake up and everyone's Damn. got max cash. I'm like, all right. And T <laughs> sucks. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah, I never, I never experienced any of those glitches either. Feels bad. But Matt, I got a question for you. So old school RuneScape now has been a thing for, I think, seven coming up to eight years. So 13, wasn't it? So I guess eight yeah. years coming. Oh, eight, eight years. years. You were obviously the head of the old school RuneScape team. You were leading it. Um, and if I may add, I think you did a fantastic job. Like you said yourself, you know, old school RuneScape took over the memberships from regular RuneScape and so forth. So my question is, do you feel like the lifespan of old school RuneScape has exceeded your expectations? Did you expect it to last this long? Oh, God, nobody did. Um, so when I first joined the old school team, I was working in the... <clears throat> Um, publishing department for Jagex, looking after their games such as um, Block and Load and Arcanist, <laughs> the Arcanist, and, and the other ones that I've completely forgotten what they're called. Legends, something of Legends, War of yeah. Legends. I know of website, right? I remember that exactly. Um, so I was looking after looking after those ones, and um, the publishing department had been going for six months, and they'd spent their entire year's budget. And uh, they hadn't produced any new games, and we're still running off these old games. And I'm sitting there looking at it, thinking, well, they spent their entire year's budget in six months. They haven't produced anything. I, I don't think this is going to last very long. And then the old school RuneScape gig came up and sort of looked, and everybody expected it to last about six months. And I thought, right, okay, well, I've got six months left at Jagex before I'm made redundant for whatever reason, so I can do it work in the publishing team or have some fun with old school RuneScape, give that a bash and see what happens. So I made that switch to old school RuneScape back then and that seemed to be the right decision looking back on it so, uh, so that was quite good because five months and three weeks later an email came around uh, saying how the publishing department had been shut down um wow. so i dodged my bullet pretty well <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah so, so... Good. so we had six months and you know when it came out we saw you know a huge amount of people come in um i think we're talking i don't remember what the numbers were uh, for 400, 300, no, 320,000 members, I think, came in for the first first month. But that's because I think the first month was also free membership for a whole bunch of people. Yeah. Yep. Um, I remember that. I remember that. Mithril? Huge, oh. Oh. Yeah, yeah a huge amount of membership came in, and uh, it just bottomed out, and straight away it just started, you saw the membership graph going down and down and down. Yeah. We had no tools to do anything with either, um, because there's... So if you think back about how the game was created, it was an old save game save was found, um, which we uh, managed to get working. But all the tools that uh, we used for that game save didn't exist because those tools that were currently used to actually create the game, so the editors and the um, other stuff that Ashel did, the clever bits, um, 
they, they had all been developed further to work with the modern game. There's no versions of the old game, so there's none of those tools to actually develop with. So all we could do was um, give away rare items, basically. And that was the first sort of three months of content was doing those rare item drops. And, yeah, uh, is that, that where you guys spawn like a bunch of uh, party hats and, and Halloween masks? Okay. Right, yeah. yeah. That was, that was enormous fun. And we could see every every weekend we did it, we had this tiny little spike of members come oh, in. And slowly man. this 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 big drop off start, slowly slowed down. And then it stopped um at one particular moment. And I have a question for you guys. Can you guess what the moment was that the membership actually stopped going down and started going up? When we start when you guys start updating the game a bit. Well, right? I think and, maybe uh, God Wars. I think it was God Wars. God Wars, probably. yeah. I think yeah. God Wars as well, if I had to yeah. guess. You clever guys. Yeah, God Wars. Yeah, um, so uh, that, that was the turning point of it going down to it, then climbing for the next seven, eight years. Yeah, Damn, mm-hmm. Jesus, that's crazy, man. Like, I think um, right now is like I, obviously I don't have a graph in front of me, but if I had to guess, we're probably sort of like going back down at the moment. Um, and it's probably, in my opinion, I'd say it's just due to a lack of updates coming into the game that people have, and I think a lot of that may have been calls because of like you know what's going on in the world right now um but matt if you were currently back in that position at jagex if the game was in the state that it's in right now what would you personally have the guys working on to get the uh the chart to go back up what do you think would be something to get people reinterested in the game so the difficulty right now is what you're if you're thinking about the chart what you've got is a fake growth over the last 18 months because of covid so that was something. The biggest changes that happened to the game and the biggest drivers that happened to the game weren't content drivers. They were um, service drivers, let's call them. Things like when we went free to play, that was one of the big things that made the boasted up the membership. When mobile came out, that was a big thing that boosted up membership. When we started doing the Dead Man stuff, that was what, what boosted up membership. And when COVID happened, um, that's boosted up membership as well. So it's much more affected by external non-game related stuff although the game related stuff is key for keeping people who join the game continuing to play the game so if i was looking at the next thing to be doing is to make purely to make membership go up i'd be looking at how you can push it to other platforms so i'll be thinking about things such as can you get it onto xbox can you get it onto playstation can you get it VR. into the yeah yeah um, I wouldn't do VR. Um, no. re- we don't have the technology. Right? Yeah. What do you, what do you re- technology? Shitty trees. Yo, yo, use cal- I mean? cloud computing. <laughs> Dude, my Mac, hey, you can you can like cloud compute RuneScape into oh, 3D. The reason I wouldn't do VR is because there's not many sets out there. So yeah. your cap for membership when you're talking it's about specific platforms, the amount of people who own those specific platforms in VR is minuscule. Um, which what why- about so? What about Steam? Does it feel like when they released it on Steam, did it feel like they maximized their marketing potential with it? Because I felt like it was a bit lackluster initially, just because you have like Rune Light with all those you know juicy mm-hmm. features, Everything. and then you had Steam Light, which had like absolutely nothing but like ooh, increase FPS, you know, like right? Yeah. So I think that's <laughs> they're, they're two different things. Okay. So I think mm-hmm. to get it on the the reason it's on Steam is a reason to have a C++ client. Um, the difference between C++ client and the other Windows clients that are out there is that it's a much more difficult to copy a C++ client. Um, so that gives Jagex the ability to make the game much more secure because they could stop bots getting in. If they were to turn off um, Windows clients, which they could do quite easily now, um, that would stop immediately um, Rune light working. <laughs> OS buddy, if anybody ever uses that, I don't know anymore. Um, uh, any other botting client that's out there would stop working. And if they only let the C client access the game servers, then for people would have to start creating their own C client, which would mimic um, the Jagex one. And that is you know, a very, very difficult thing to do. The level of technology, the level of technical expertise you need to do that's much higher than what's currently being done. So, so why do you think? Why do you think they didn't do this in in such a long time? Because you mean, I feel like was asking for it yeah. years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I mean, there's I think there's multiple reasons for that. Um, there was the the biggest. I say the whole client story started with obviously Jack Mob, who owned yeah. OS Buddy. He um, created the botting client. He then get employed by Jagex, became very close friends with MMG. 
And then there was an agreement. Um, we assume there was an agreement between him and MMG for him to make uh, OS Buddy. Um, I nobody seems to know if there was an agreement there. Um, uh, um, MMG had left by that point, so we couldn't talk to him, and um, mm. there wasn't a good relationship with Jack at the time either. Um, so there was nothing we could do really to stop it, and it seemed to be quite beneficial at the time um, because people did want to use those sort of things. The game engine wasn't in a position where we could really compete with third-party clients. So if we were to make our own client, we would probably have to stop every other sort of content development and just work on a client by ourselves um, because the engine just wasn't in a position to support it. I guess what they've done now is they've updated the the uh, engine enough to make it now feasible to make their own client and to compete with the other clients out there. So I'd imagine that long-term play from Jagex on this will be um, we want to get everybody willingly move on to the C++ client so they can shut all the other clients down. And I think the key thing is willingly move on to that client. And to do yeah. that, they've got to make that client better than the other clients. So it's happening. Yeah. It's happening. That's, the slipping of dude. clients, man. I'm yeah, so happy. We, Bots are going to be gone you know, in the future. <laughs> it's going to be great. We've been talking about this now for quite a few podcasts, and we assumed that was what was going to take place. Uh, yeah. minus the C++. I'm not entirely sure what that is, but we were saying this like in the last podcast, I think we discussed it, because that kind of leads me on to what I want to ask you uh, in regards to botting. So mm. obviously you used to work at, at Jagex, and I'm sure you have a lot of insight into this. Um, there's a lot of like conspiracy theories and a lot of, you know, there's a lot of people who go around and they say, you know, the reason why there's so many bots in the game is because Jagex intentionally don't ban them. And it's one of those things that somebody says, and it, at first glance, it's like, I don't believe that, I trust Jagex. But then at the same time, there has like been proof that has come out in the past of former uh, JMod speaking about how back in the day, you, they were only allowed to ban so many bots per, uh, per week and so on because of membership prices. So, what I want to ask you is, obviously, although you're not working at Jagex now, so you don't have, you know, direct access to how many accounts get banned and so forth, but from somebody, like, from an out an outside perspective, when I look at bots and I see how many of them are being banned and just, like, how many there are, to me, it screams that whatever Jagex are using as their bot anti-bot uh, device, like, to pick up bots and ban them off and so forth, it's clearly not working. And if I were to go a step further, I think probably, you know, the biggest event, which was Bot Nuke Day back in pre-EOC, um, which kind of came across as like, oh, Jagex have some sort of crazy technology to deal with these bots. It just turned out to be a case of the person who owned the biggest bot client basically ratted on all of the people that used it. <laughs> so my question to you is simply, do Jagex... Do you believe that Jagex do limit the amount of bots they can ban? And also, how big of an issue do you think the bot, the botting clients and how how advanced they are compared to the current bot detection that Jagex has? Is it a really big issue we have? And is it something that Jagex should be focusing on right now? Um, I, I don't think it's a big issue. Um, when I was there, there was never a conversation about um, let's stop banning bots to keep membership figures going up. Um, okay. And that would have been a conversation I would have instigated to my job to, to have that conversation. So that conversation never happened. It might have happened since. Um, obviously, I, I wouldn't know. Um, but I'd be surprised. Um, I think knowing how the team work and knowing the people in the team, I think if that was a strategy, I think yeah. um, it, it, it just wouldn't fly. And For, you know, for, for context... Yeah. For context on that, by the way, I believe it was um, Mod Shawnee's podcast, I believe he did, and I, I think he had a former uh, J-Mod on, or I can't remember who it was, and they were basically saying they were limited to how many accounts they could ban, but this was this was back in pre-OC, so this mm. was many, many years ago, so not yeah, an old yeah. school RuneScape. Yeah, so that, 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 that could well have happened back then, I can't honestly remember that long ago. Um, but yeah, so bots in RuneScape, bots in old school. Uh, when I was there, it was probably 5 to 10%, I think our estimation was, of accounts that were actually bots um, or botting at any one point. So, you know, it wasn't a huge. 90% of accounts were real accounts. 
and a lot of the bottom ones were obviously all um, uh, uh, congregating around the same places. So um, uh, it wasn't so much of a problem. The technology to catch them, um, it's, it's not about the technology. The technology is there to catch them. What the, the limiting factor was the ability of people to use the technology to catch them. So if you look at the people I worked with, so we, for example, um, and Tyron, for example, um, they were two people who were very good at it, but probably the only two who were. Um, and they they had to manage all of the all of the games. And I, I, I petitioned over and over again for more support to get rid of bots um, and just increase the amount of people working on it. And that, that never seemed to happen. Um, I remember one conversation I had with uh, um, the head of the department that was responsible for it. So, you know, we, we got to get rid of more bots. We need to get more people in on this. We need to we need to be recruiting for people to help out with. And I got the reply that, well, why don't you just make the game so you can't bot it? And uh, I was like, mm, did you really say that to me? But yeah, it's like, <laughs> it's like how? <laughs> how do you do that? Like, yeah. yeah, I think that was my reply. I was like, well, how are we going to do that? I was like. Uh. <laughs> Yeah. So, if I'm correct in thinking, then it's not an issue of not having the programs to detect the bots. It's an issue of having experienced people being able to look at that program and basically select the bots. But like, how difficult is that then to to figure out? Surely, like, I obviously have no idea about this bot detection. I don't even know if you want to talk about it because I don't want to help the bot clients out. But like, why is it so difficult for just any JMod to just be like? Is it not as clear as like, yes, that's following a script or yes, that's somebody who's manually clicking? Is it not so black and white as that? Yeah, no, it's, just, it's not a, a big red thing flashes up. It says, bot, wah, wah, wah. You've got to look <laughs> at the data and analyze the data and understand that. Um, so I think, uh, so the one thing to bear in mind is in game, everything you do is tracked, every single itty bitty little thing. So all the data is already in there. It's just a case of understanding that data, reading that data, and and, uh, and delivering against that. Um, the the biggest limitation on it though was making sure it remained accurately accurate. So I think our, our bot detection was something like five nines um, with what we're pushing towards the ninety nine point nine 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 percent accuracy. Um, but when you're banning ten thousand a day bots, you're going to get a whole bunch of people. Um, all, all the time over the course of the week, and you're going to get the wrong people, and people are going to make mistakes, and suddenly you only hear about the the incorrect ones. Mm. Had we have pushed it down to eighty percent, we could have cleared all the bots out, but then you'd have twenty percent of those ten thousand be incorrectly banned every single day. Um, and that was the decision that Jagex made was that in order to protect the real players, we'll take the hit on the bots in game um, because yeah. we don't we want as minimally as possible to ban real players. Yeah. Um, the case did get wrong. I mean, one big example of it going wrong was Jack Mob was playing around with it, of all people, um, playing around with the bot detection system and managed to ban anybody who walked past the U tree. <laughs> hey, you know what? I'm okay with that. Take them all out. <laughs> and they were bold, you know, green pants looking dudes. <laughs> Insta bit. Dude, do you know, that's, that's actually really, really good insight you just gave, by the way, about tracking every action we do. And the first thing that came to my mind is that a lot of RW tiers are worried about trading somebody the cold. And instead, they just like, I, I can imagine somebody at JMod looking at that and being like, okay, so this guy's been killing Vorka for a week now, and then he just sold everything and put all of his cash onto a table in Varrock. <laughs> like, yeah. so Normal. that does that does nothing. Normal. You can st obviously still get banned for doing that. I you can, you every can week, bro. <laughs> I think the okay. amount of data tracked is about three terabytes a day of data, or it wasn't oh my I left. So huge amounts of data for the games games to pick up. That's insane, so man. Yeah, can we can we expand on the whole client stuff? Because I feel like in a way it was kind of like with like how Runelight came out the way it did. It was kind of like opening Pandora's box, you know, for like not just players, but just also for like people that were, you know, uh, just thinking about using it for nefarious means, you know, like creating <clears throat> super clients or like stuff like that, right? So. So I remember, right, like you had, you guys had Conduit and OS Buddy, right, as like the premier third parties for a while. And there was drama with Conduit where they couldn't start membership like, like OS Buddy could because you guys denied them the ability mm. to do so, right? So uh, like there was this. That, that's, that's not true. What happened there? And this all yeah. goes part of, I mean, OS Buddy um, was, uh, it was a dirty, dirty thing. 
Um, yeah. I wish Buddy went to them and said that we had told them to go to them to say, don't do that, and we hadn't. Oh, so I, wish oh, I see. Mm -hmm. I wish okay. Buddy blocked everyone from getting membership for their clients, pretty yeah. much. Yeah, because like, I, I remember Foxy, he was working oh on it. He was God. like pissed off, you know? R Rice, you literally stole like my question, which is great because I was going to try to throw that in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that, that's only a part, that's only a f the filler, to be honest, to to the real thing with, with Rune Light. But like, of course, Rune Light came, came, you know, came, came up, right? And it was going to be open source, it was going to be free. <laughs> there was no like, you know, charges or anything, which obviously killed the OS Buddy model, you know, thank thankfully. Thank but God, like, man. but when it first came out, though, it it was such a controversial thing, right? Because they were like so open source to the point that I think hackers could basically duplicate what they had and then yeah. modify it, right? On top of it to do whatever yeah. they want. So like what was kind of like I don't know, all the all the things surrounding that. Like how are you guys gonna handle it? You know, especially with how popular it was for the player base. Like people love this so much already, but it was already so sketchy, you know. And I'm I'm sure you guys were super concerned about the fact that they were like you know, they had like pretty much your code out there, right? In the open. So like what was the process like? So Rune Light came out about two years before it got popular. So it was work it was being worked on by a guy that I was in the high level forums with sort of back in two thousand and seven, eight. I can't remember his name now. <laughs> Computer Geek, I think I want to say the name was. Um but anyway, yeah, so we we'd known each other from back then and he'd 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 been making this Primarily for the reason of um, having a free version for OS Buddy. So he didn't agree with OS Buddy. He didn't believe OS Buddy should um, uh, charge for what they're doing. Um, and when I had a conversation with him, he said, Look, I would rather not be doing this, but I'm doing this because I want to offer a free version of what OS Buddy does. And I was like, Mate, I, I get that. You know, I'm, I'm with you there. Um, obviously, not officially, I couldn't say that at the time. <laughs> um, so we, we sat down and it was the entire heads of the company sat down and uh, said, look, we've got to do something about this. How do we deal with clients? Because um, we had OS Buddy that we had an all right relationship with, so we knew we could manage that. And then we had RuneLight, um, and RuneLight were... The, the issue with them was exactly like you said. Um, it, was, it dropped the level of um, technical um, knowledge you needed to make a bot, because the most difficult part about making the bot is making the client, um, because... RuneLight was a free um, open source client. Basically, anyone could take that and then write the bot scripts on top of that. And the bot scripts are the easy bit. Um, so it allowed a lot more people, a lot more access to botting in old school. And we'd sort of spotted this and figured this out like, we've got to shut this down now because it's it's um, not going to work and it's just going to make the game worse. And had and so obviously, I, I drew the short straw of having to go and talk to this guy um and and play the hardball and say look you just got to show it down mate if you don't show it down we're gonna we're gonna get the lawyers on your ass and all that sort of stuff um and obviously he posted publicly and uh and next day we had another meeting and uh the leadership spun on his coin and said right we've got to we, we can't show it down now it's like really <laughs> still got the same problem you know we haven't solved anything here <laughs> You're not the one who's been up all night reading about people wanting to kill your kids, have you? No, that was me. Oh, damn. <laughs> they didn't, yeah, didn't was... care about that too much. Um, I've never seen the community so mad, you know, over a client. Like, it was crazy, honestly. Well, yeah, no, absolutely. It was, it was um, I mean, I still think had we have forced it through and shut it down at that point, <clears> uh, we wouldn't have as many bots as we've got now. We wouldn't have as many cheating clients as we've got now. Um, we would have... We would have buried all that. However, I don't know where we'd be with OS Buddy. Um, because what happened when we spoke to um, Adam afterwards, you know, it took about a week to sort of get him to talk to us. Um, spoke to him again and, uh, and said, look, the one thing I want you to do is close source the client right now. Just, just, get, it, just get it done. Um, and, uh, and that's what uh, he agreed to do that because he understood our concerns for it, close source the client. But by then it was too late. Um, I think had we approached it more along the lines of let's close source the client with them and we need to do that now, that would have solved the problem a lot earlier because as soon as we went in there with the uh, you know size 11 feet, I think people started um, copying the client. And uh, there were so many different versions out there that, that by then it was uh, with the, the horse had bolted. Um, so yeah, the positive side of it though was that because RuneLight got more popular, and this action made RuneLight more popular as well, 
iOS Buddy stopped being a thing, and iOS Buddy was was I think was going to be a problem had it have continued going. So they'd have more and more of the player base, and they would be making more and more money from it. Um, that suddenly there are how do you stop them earning money off your IP? Because what they were doing was um, effectively um, taking money from Jagex that Jagex should be having. And Jagex had worked on the IP. This other company come along and were just making money off it, which, you know, without Jagex's permission, there would be this whole legal quagmire of how, how we deal with that. Um, but it all went away because we ballsed up the uh, way we approached um, uh, Runelight, and it turned out good from that angle in the end. Mm. Mm. Damn. But we did try a few times to talk to him and sort of get him in the office so we could have a chat with him, figure out how it's going along and see if, how we could work closely together. Uh, but we could never really get him over. Um, but hey-ho, we did try. Yeah, it seems like Oz Buddy was uh, definitely an evil person in that scenario, even mm. though Runelight seemed to unleash the bots. But there's a nice quote that goes, uh, the pathway to hell is paved with good intentions, right? <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. speaking, well, of those, good, man. speaking of those third party clients so mm. I, I'm not sure if you yeah. would know this but when they log into those cheat clients does it just show someone logging on to RuneLight and that's why you can't detect them um, oh, it depends there's multiple ways of tracking um, I'm also not going to say what they are um, okay, fair enough Yeah, um, but there are multiple ways of tracking it some full foul some don't <laughs> so regarding Regarding the rune light, uh, rune light stuff, so I mean, how did they manage to get the data to make the client like you know using that much information? How did they get that much data on your client in the first place? You know, um, I can't client, imagine it being legal. Sorry. Um, I mean, they didn't. He did it in a legal way. And remember, before it got popular, he'd been doing this for two years. Um, so he'd spent two years building this thing um, to get it to get it to a decent point. Um, so he'd, he'd, he'd created it in the right way. So it wasn't doing anything which was against our terms and conditions. It wasn't using any of our IP. What it was was accessing the server, which is a completely legal thing to do. Um, yeah, they weren't taking it, interrupting any data, and they were doing, doing things properly. So he just knew what he was doing and uh, made it. Interesting. Wow. Okay. So, so basically Matt, the code is his code mostly. Yeah. And then they just uh, then the bot makers apply that on top of his code. Is, yeah. is the point. Oh, okay. okay. So Matt, would you say how confident are you if Jagex were to make their own client and they got it up to the same standard as Rune Light and they were to make it with I believe you said C plus plus? How confident are you that you know there wouldn't just be a bot client that pops up with the same C plus plus, like, is that something which is kind of unlikely to happen, or because there's obviously a lot of money in it for the people that design these bots, right? And I'm assuming that C plus plus. I know that you can take a course to learn that, and obviously you're gonna have to get so good at it to be able yeah. to use it. I imagine, but like the people that are making these um, the bot scripts and the bot clients right now, would they effectively have to go and do like a course if they wanted to like replicate their own? Yeah, I mean, you're going to need somebody who knows C++, so whether recruitment or, or learning it. Um, I mean, the, the way I'd answer that, and I don't know the answer to this, is um, how many bots are in Ruscape 3? Because they've got a C++ client. Mm -hmm. And I don't seem to see them shouting and screaming about it very often. Um, mm -hmm. So that that would be sort of one way to look at it. If if Ruscape 3 is is pretty bot-free, then it's, it's, it's probably is a good indicator. Is Ruscape 3 against... <laughs> botting just like old school or would they maybe because they are more of a um you know they sell items for for money would they want to actually welcome them maybe. no they would um it's a company-wide or it was a company-wide um strategy okay, okay. So well, that's good to know all right and you were talking about your i mean we we all had the same idea that if old school made a client made it really good then banned everything else bots would be gone and you said that as well which uh i just got to know was that a plan jagex might have had when you were working there or you just came up with that no i mean it seems a logical next step mm -hmm. uh not a plan i'm aware of um but just seemed a logical next step by doing it so we just got to hope and pray then that they're logical is what is mm -hmm. what i'm hearing and the, okay. the, the, so the key not. thing <laughs> is the willing move from root light to the client to do that, the client's got to be better, but I also think the Jaggers need to improve their relationship with the players um, in order to make that willingness happen. Because 
RuneScape players do like their um, conspiracy theories, as we discussed earlier. And there's, um, there's quite a many to pick yeah. from. So <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot yeah. of conspiracies for one old ass game. I'll say that. Yeah, indeed. But yeah, so I think I think they're the two things that need to happen to make that that move possible. Mm. Um, but we're probably, I would imagine, we're at least three, four years away from that being a reality right now. Anyway. Bro, is RuneScape yeah. going to be alive in three to four years with this many bots? Yeah. And we think so. Yeah. Oh god, uh, yeah. I mean, if you I... look at the, the amount of players playing it right now, it's huge. All right, good. Yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, as long as the you know the bot the bot wipers, they just keep wiping out bots, you know, constantly. I don't <laughs> feel they like go... they're wiping out anything, but I do see they wipe out like a hundred thousand bots a week. But I go out there to the the people making cannonballs, and everyone's got like forty million XP and yeah. something. And it's crazy. I, you know what it is. I think they literally have bots that make bots now, you know? Oh, okay. that's been going on for years. Exactly. So it's yeah. like, you know, quest you, bots. You, you cycle them out, but then they're, they're going to flop back the next day, but you got to cycle yeah. them out. There are, um, there are, to get past our, um, prote or the protections on creating new accounts, there's all, there's swathes of pre created accounts which bot uh, companies sell to other bot companies and millions and millions of accounts that have never been logged into. And um, they sell between each other to bot again. So there's all that goes on as well. Um, yeah. It's quite fascinating. But the interesting thing about the bots, though, is a legitimate player won't like bots and um, don't like bots. But the bots are, are pretty essential for the game right now. So forgetting about the revenue that Jagex would lose if uh, bots disappeared, what would happen to the economy? And it's a question for you guys. What would happen to the economy if every bot disappeared tomorrow? Prices would opinion, go up. <laughs> in my opinion, the game would be better, right? Because we would have more of a more of a demand than a supply, right? All that supply of, of things coming in the game, but we just have a demand for it. Makes people go and farm that and kind of balance out the economy. But I'm sure we'd have a huge dip for the first week or so. But I think overall, uh, it's better to have money that you can buy things with that that's worth something, rather than just buying dragon bones for like one k now. Like the 1.2k used to be like 3,000 GP. Black chins are like 1.7k each. That's that's crazy. Well, man. it's also relative to how much gold comes in the game too, though. So so it, like let's say all the bots go away, right? If the items, the resources themselves, you know, um, supply wise goes down, but the amount of gold that comes in the game stays, then yeah, then then you you, you would increase the price of those resources. But the thing yeah. is, is that the bots probably also produce a lot of gold. I'm not exactly sure what where most of the I botting scenes happen at the moment. A couple of bots, like the Alkine bots, which are super rare at the Fountain of Rune, because they can out mm -hmm. for free there. But those are rare. I only know. Yeah. Bots so really that bring would it be safe to us? Would it be safe to assume most bots would just be supply, you know, like resource pumping instead of GP pumping? Yeah. Uh, Matt, do you know? Have you were you able to see through this data? I'm not. I'm not sure. <laughs> at, least, at least back in your time. <laughs> to me, it's it's not necessarily just about the economy. It's about what people want to do in the game, what they want to play in the game. And I think mm. that how people want to play old school RuneScape has changed over the last eight years. Before it was we want to play it. At the very beginning, it was we want to play it in the way that we always used to play it, and that's definitely not there anymore. Um, and we seem to be very focused on we want to play the big, exciting, interesting things. We don't want to be the people who are uh, picking flax to make bowstrings or or collecting the secondaries so that you can have enough. That's prep a bowstring. humble job, okay? That's a humble activity. <laughs> it's a very it's honest job. work. <laughs> yeah, but I just don't think people want to do it, and I think the vast majority of people just want to play the interesting, exciting content. And I mean, to me, that's... something that I can do less. If bots disappear, I can do less of what I enjoy doing in game, um, because the, the the stuff's gone up in price, and that to yeah. me is the really interesting part of yeah. if we get rid of bots, uh, bots disappeared. How how would that be impacted? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but then that's a it's... good. Um, sorry, Rakes. I just want to say that that's a that's a good line of sight right there. But in disagreements, you know, just kind of playing devil's advocate. Uh, I feel like right now people are getting burnt out because they're just playing exciting things and they can make it to those exciting things pretty easily with the amount of supplies they can gather and the safety of the game, which we won't get into if the game should be safe or not, safe deaths and whatever. We'll talk about it too long. But if people <laughs> are able to grind actual things in between going to those crazy events, maybe they mm -hmm. wouldn't get as burnt and we'd probably still have more people playing uh, throughout the pandemic because I know a lot of people just grind raids too. 
and that's all they do, and they don't do anything yeah. else. The thing yeah, is, yeah, it's, that's an it, issue. Mm-hmm. It's a double sided, is it double edged or double sided sword? Yeah, Either way, it, it's kind of like so. There's two things here, and I don't know enough about this, so maybe Matt, you can give me some insight. So, firstly, I would say a lot of people play Iron Man, and a lot of the re- resources that you're speaking of. Firstly, the bots don't even affect those players, like aside from maybe not being able to find a world. Uh, mm-hmm. And I don't know how many, like, out of the 100% of our player base, I don't know if it's, like, 40% Iron Man, 60% main, but it's, like, not 40%? only do the Iron Men... <laughs> Holy probably shit, I more. hope not. But, yeah. Matt, do, Matt, do you have an insight into how many Iron Men there are in, in the game? 40%? I think, I think it was about 18 when I left. Okay. I think it's 40 now or something. Okay. Like that. But, like, here, every single... Dude, every content creator, aside from, like, me and Mint playing Iron Man, like, everybody plays Iron Man, and the, the truth is, those accounts aren't affected by the economy. Like, you know, like a, dra- a pair of Dragon Claws could go down to Alk price, mm. and if you're an Iron Man, it doesn't matter, it doesn't affect you. You're playing offline mode, effectively, unless you go in the wieldy. But then, you also have a lot of bosses which drop those resources, so you don't even need to get them. Uh, and that's including for main accounts as well. But, where the bots do hurt mains is the you end up doing this content, which is incredibly difficult to do, endgame PVM, whatever it is, and then you end up getting a drop, which is insanely rare. It might take you a ton of time to get, and it's it's basically worthless. And that's happened a lot now. It's like, if you look at, like, raids, TOB items, and so forth, pretty much anything where the bots have gone, like, if you take Nightmare, Nightmare is a really good one, because Inquisitor pieces uh, were around about four to 500 mil a piece, and then I believe, I don't know if it was being botted, but I know that Venezuelan oh, gold farmers were going oh, there. Or and like the price is less than halved. And for somebody, like for the end game content to get a drop there, it's so difficult. It takes months to get like, you know, anything worth of value unless you get super lucky. And then for it to drop and be like, oh, great, it's, it's barely worth the supplies that I used to get it. Yeah. It's like that's, that's a big demotivating factor. Um, but I do know where you're coming from. Like they definitely do keep resources down. If you're playing a main account right now is the time to get any skill to level 99 because you can probably do it for like an insanely cheap cost. Mm. Um, but I, I think the main trouble with bots, and that's for me personally, is like as somebody who's a main account player, I don't play Iron Man. It's like the bots affect my gameplay because I'm not rewarded so handsomely because of those bots. And it's very demotivating. So I completely understand why, you know, most people are super against them. Um, but a question for you, Matt, and this is something I've asked these guys and other guests that we've had on the show. So if, let's just say, like Jagex just said, screw it, we're just going to let the bots be. And oh. let's say that they they did theoretically crash the game and ruin it for main accounts. Do you think with the amount of Iron Man accounts that we have on the game, um, that the game would continue or what be affected a, hugely breaks you that's a terrifying question dude if that plays i out, know but but that, that that's the out, thing man. it's like it is it is like a worst case scenario but i'm thinking like there's a Ugh. lot of iron man accounts and a lot of people would probably just make the switch anyways if that were to happen i could see it <laughs> mm. i don't you know I, I I think if uh, we doubled the amount of bots in game, you probably wouldn't notice a difference, or ninety nine percent of people probably wouldn't notice a difference. I think the people who cared about the bots would be outraged, and uh, Reddit would be a hotbed of uh, of uh, well, the cesspit. When basically. are they not? Right? When are they not? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, well, I love Reddit as well, so I'm quite happy for it being a cesspit because it entertains me. Um, yeah, so I, I think if it was to double, you probably wouldn't notice. Most ninety nine percent of people wouldn't notice. Um, it was ten times as many. I, d- I don't know. I, d- I don't. I don't think it would have a huge impact. It, um, I wonder if like the bots would fight other bots at that point for supplies, and then they would go down. <laughs> yeah, bot wars. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? So the- do you know what? Speaking of um, speaking of gold farmers and RWTers, Matt. So. Yeah. I am really a brick wall with this, okay? And I've asked this so many times to people, and I, I really hope you can change my mind on this. So I obviously, I, I don't RWT, okay? It's like, mm. it, it's not my thing. I make my golds, I play the game. I have no interest in like relating the GP 
to the actual value in real life because I just want to enjoy the game. So yeah. something which I've tried to get an opinion or a take on to change my mind on this is people have a huge issue with people that are RWT, such as like the Doodle Arena stakers, okay? Which I can understand to like a point because it's like they're playing RuneScape and some of them are making, you know, tens of, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars or have done. And I think that a lot of people have an issue with that because, you know, A, it's like kind of jealousy, right? It's like, I want that $100,000 and you can't blame anybody for that. But in terms of those people and RWT as a whole, I've never been able to like, like sort of like puzzle it together in how it actively hurts the game. And I yeah. feel like it should, but I haven't been able to come to that conclusion myself because I see it like this. It's like, if someone's RWT in, it's like, sure, they're benefiting themselves financially, but I, I just can't, I fail to see how that hurts the game aside from it being against the rules. So I was hoping you maybe had like something that could change my mind on that because I'm really a brick wall of it. And I, I, I don't know what to say to people when they ask me about it because I'm like, I, I kind of don't care. It's like, if they want to do it and risk their accounts, that's fine. It's like, the only thing I'm jealous about is the money they're making from it. Aside from that, I don't think it hurts the game, but maybe I'm wrong. Okay, so there's there's probably three different parts to this. So there is the real world trading, which is done by the gold farmers who create huge amounts of accounts and then uh, bot them, create money, uh, create accounts and run it as a business. That is some of the impacts the game and is quite dangerous to the game because it stops players enjoying it. I mean, when I was talking about yeah. the bots earlier, what I was basically trying to get across was it's not straightforward as if we ban bots, it all gets good. There's lots of things to think about, about banning bots and, and how that approaches. Um, but I think just generally agreed, and most people see that huge amounts of bots in game would be bad for the game. Yeah. Um, so that side, I would be like, yeah, that that is a definite bad thing for real world trading. They're doing it primarily because they want to make money. The botting is just the route to make the money. Um, so I mean, it's hacking too, you know. Indeed, like, yeah. If people didn't want to, if people just didn't buy gold, then there'd be almost no incentive to hack people's accounts. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Exactly. And I think that the. the the negative behavior that surrounds almost this business-sized um, gold-making activities is is the bad thing. So like hacking accounts, phishing sites, uh, credit card fraud, um, all the other bits that go around with that as well is, is all very bad for, for many, many reasons. Um, when it comes to an individual selling some gold, so um, uh, yesterday I did a interview with um, somebody from a radio station in America about Venezuelan gold farmers, um, and there are. She was saying that she'd been speaking to people who were um, would log on to RuneScape, make a few um, dollars, which they could then use to to survive for the next few days. And to me, that's like I, I, that's fine. I, I have no yeah. problem with that. There's nothing um, like I see it like that as well. I'm like whenever people are like rude to the Venezuelan people in my chat. I'm just like, come on, guys. These people are not driving around in Lamborghinis. These guys are trying to feed their family. And I'm like, it, I, I feel like if I worked at Jagex and I was seeing somebody that was from Venezuela, obviously like RWT, in, I think if it was on the lower end, I would just be like, yep, next. Just yeah. like, just ignore just, it. Just, I, I, I have too much time. empathy for them. Yeah, Jagex don't target those guys. What you've also got yeah. to be very aware of, which is what I told this lady yesterday as well, is there are massive bot farms and real world trading farms, gold farms mm -hmm. from Venezuela as well. So there's people in Venezuela who are making tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars a week by gold farming in Ruscape. Um, I mean, they're probably not. Uh, they're probably not doing it just to put food on the table. No, um, got it. So, definitely uh, not a gang. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. so th that's like the trouble with it because I there are people which obviously are just trying to feed their families and so forth, but like there has to be like I saw a, a Sir Pogger video recently, and obviously not this guy in particular, but this guy basically allowed a bunch of people to use these computers so they could get a living. Um, but I'm sure there are sort of like sort of like pimps of that industry that are yeah, actually yes. making a lot of money and taking advantage of those really poor individuals are just trying to like guys, eat food a lot of those guys are in america too right it's not even in Vinny. those those yeah, the, the orchestrators yeah. the top top dogs are in america it's crazy everywhere you know mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Speaking so you, of, got, you got to be careful right. but it's the the other part of it as well is it's not about um 
the individual. So my my view has always been, and obviously I couldn't say this when I was the J mod, but my view has always been if people are doing it for themselves to make a bit of money, I think, yeah, fair enough. You know, I haven't got a problem with that. And I've had conversations with people um uh who've said, you know, well, I've made this amount of money, ha 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 ha. And I've always gone back to them and was like, Well, what did you do with that money? Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I spent it on cocaine and hookers. And it's like, well, you just oh. wasted all the money then, haven't you? Uh, <laughs> yeah. you come back and say, Well, I'll put myself through university and you're like, Well, well done. <laughs> like it, here's here's the thing c so this was uh back in pre-eoc so this was just back before runescape 3 became a thing and i have an rwt in an old school runescape but in pre-oc i did i sold mm. basically a blue party hat and like a few other things when runescape 3 it was when they brought out the, the um like the beta and then all of a sudden they were like this is what the game's gonna be and i was yeah. like i was a teenager i was like i have no interest in this game I RWT'd and I used that money to pass my driving test, buy a car and actually become like someone in society. I went and got a job with that. Do you know what I mean? So I've always justified that to myself as never being like a bad thing. Cause I'm like, I did something good with it. But at the same time, that's, going I think to hell, that's bro. probably, it's probably my, yeah, I'm going to hell. It's yeah. probably Shame, where man. my, it's probably where my, Shame ban, it's bro. probably dude hey listen i'm just saying man it's please over. don't ban my main account i'll be so it's upset over, i've had that for bro. so long so long you just but show like, up the rune fest where my accounts gone uh. <laughs> but like that's the thing I, I definitely have a bias but at the same time specifically on the doodle arena because that's a very hot topic matt a lot of people mm -hmm. have big issues with the doodle arena people now i can i completely condone the behavior from the people at the Dude Arena who send death threats, who dox, and do all of that nasty stuff. Okay. But the Godwin. action of just selling gold from the Dude Arena and making IRL financial gains, is that something which you see as damaging to the game itself? Okay. So before we get onto Jewel Arena, because I think there's, there's, multiple levels of that we need to talk about um before we get onto that the other aspect of um real world trading as a whole uh, which people forget about an awful lot is you've got how it impacts the people you've also got how it impacts jagex um now there is i'm not i'm not too clued up on this but there is a um angle around ip law which in order to secure your ip and make sure that you um are in control of of your value of of your your um uh the things that you've made um you need to take action against people who are trying to um break this uh the uh, uh intellectual property by ip i mean uh your intellectual property laws and it's quite potentially that if you're allowing people to real world trade um you are allowing people to infringe your ip law your ip your intellectual property and if you don't do anything about it then they're allowed to continue doing it the impact of that is it affects the shareholder price i see um, Shareholder price has bigger global impacts um, on that. So that is, I'm not entirely sure how that works, but that is another angle to be aware of because the CEO's job of Jagex is to uh, protect the shareholders. That is a, every CEO's job in every company around the world. His primary thing is to the shareholders. Um, okay. People underneath that is when it flows down, but with every company in the world, your CEO, his primary focus is protecting the shareholders. So that is why that is probably a thing. So that's the other side you've got to think about as well. Um, if the shareholder price of Jagex drops, um, uh, they'll get sold off, they'll get split up, their IP will then get abused, and um, uh, you will uh, end up having to pay to buy real stuff in old school, basically. So that's that, that's the other that's the other big thing that people don't really think about. Yeah, it's dual arena. Kind of, well, yeah. before we get into dual arena, man. Uh, I just got to say, because you just brought up a really cool subject, because I always tell people Jagex is a traded company, and that may be why we don't get all these updates or the funding we want for what we want in the game. Uh, but back in, I can't remember when they started cracking down on free trade in the original old school. But do you think maybe that's uh, the reason why they... Was that 2009? Mm. Is that... 2008, 2009, yeah. Is that why they started acting very heavily on RWT back then for the stockholders, or is, do you um, have info on that? Um, that was for credit card fraud, purely, honestly, for credit card fraud. Ah. Um, so when you're dealing with a credit card company, um, if more than X percent of your annual turnover, and I mean, we're talking like 1% or half a percent or something of your annual turnover is fraudulent, they uh, remove credit card support so you can no longer use credit cards. 
And if you couldn't use a card to pay for uh, RuneScape, the company dies then and there. Um, yeah, could, I heard a lot of people using fake cards back in the day. Yeah. Yeah, so that's that. That's the pure reason for that, and that was the reason to stop credit card fraud, and that was through real world trading. Um, based in China at the time. Always um, China, what? man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we can go to the dual arena now. Thank you. I just I always wondered if they had uh, yeah. correlated there. Uh, dual arena, by the way, Kemp Q, big content creator, brings up a lot of attention to the dark side of the arena. And speaking mm-hmm. of RWT as well. Because I don't know who out there is buying all this gold. Maybe the first year Old School RuneScape was out, but we're seven years. Who's buying the gold still, right? I could only <sighs> assume it's probably the people who get cleared when staking. Yes. Right? See that bit. Yeah. Because <laughs> who else would buy gold nowadays other than constant people getting cleaned? So could the Duel Arena kind of have a huge uh, base impact um, just for RWT in general, just because they might be the buyers? Yeah, so I mean, I, when I before I left Jagex, I asked um, we to uh, have a look at what the impact of removing the jewel arena would be to the game, and look at it in three different um, areas. One, which is the impact on legitimate players who normally just want to do the jewel arena stuff. The impact on people who could potentially be addicted to gambling in the jewel arena, and the impact on real world trading as a whole. Um, then I left, and I never got the report back, so I don't know what the answer was. Um, or whether it has ever got done. But one outcome I can imagine is that if the Jewel Arena went, obviously the people who just played it for enjoyment um, and uh, for legitimate reasons um, would be very unhappy. That's obviously uh, an obvious one. Um, the next thing was what would happen to real-world trading? Would the real-world traders stop all of a sudden? No, they wouldn't. They'd go and do it somewhere else. So you remove the you remove the jewel arena, you'll drive them somewhere else in the game, probably right outside um, Edgeville. And the problem with that is then you've lost the control over that environment. So a lot more cheating would happen, a lot more bad practice would happen. Uh, people would be crashing each other all the time, and people would be using all sorts of tricks and things to do it. That like the gambling for- again, like what, what, what were some of the gambling? The flower rolls, dice yeah. rolls. I think that would probably they- start coming up if they banned the jewel arena. I wouldn't even expect that. The people would go and fight in the wilderness and say, right, you carry 10 mil in your inventory. Well, no, 10 bill as it is these days in your inventory. I'll carry 10 bill in mine. Uh, we'll show each other our inventories, then we'll go and fight each other for a death match. And See? a death match would happen, or somebody else would turn up. And, you know, that's where that would okay. happen. Um, that's kind what, of an IQ cause, test, though. That's, it would cause yeah. more issues than it would solve, and you can regulate everything in the dude arena. Okay. Yeah, that, that actually, that's a fair reason not to remove it. I get that. Now, the other reason is obviously people who are potentially addicted to it. And um, I, I never thought it was much of a problem until I saw Odeblock post about it um, 18 months or so ago. Um, and I was like, oh, actually, I could see this being a thing. So I started watching what people were talking about when it came to the Jewel Arena. And I think there is, there is an issue there. And again, if you are addicted to it, and again, I don't know the answer to this, but again, I can imagine the outcome being is that if you removed it, you suddenly taken that. Would these people stop gambling? Um, the answer again is very unlikely they'd stop gambling. They'd find other ways to scratch that urge, and you've taken away the safe, the safest area that you can gamble in game, and then just left it open for an underworld black market gambling, breaking kneecaps if you don't pay with money, sort of thing. Um, and that, to me, I think would add more. St- I, I can imagine it adding more stress and pressure onto the people who are addicted to gambling, making their their mental health and their their mm-hmm. their, their right. work. So I could see that being a, a yeah, bad would, thing. Would it be fair to put a limit though on, on the dual arena? Like in terms of how many times you can stake and how much you can stake because I feel like you know staking a little bit here and there in moderation it's probably not the worst thing ever because I mean RuneScape's just an addicting game at the end of the day, right? But like yeah I just I just don't think there's there's a real reason why people should be staking ten bill or like five bill at a time, you know? No, it because, probably is. You know. But then if if you put a limit on it, people go elsewhere and do the same thing. And you've got exactly the same problems again. And what you're doing this time is you're focusing on the pro- people with the biggest problems. So you're taking mm-hmm. the, the safe. But I'm also I think there's another point though that hasn't been talked about. It's just that the dual arena is 
the ease of access to it, you know, mm -hmm. is that I think that because of how popular it is, like, you know, you see people streaming that the big streamers stream that all the time is that that kind of thing can easily get people addicted to it easier, you know, because it's right there in front of you. You can watch people do it and then you go in and try it and then boom, you get hooked, you know. So I guess so, the argument from your point is if we get rid of if it's not we anymore, is it? If or, it goes down, it's not anybody it. new getting addicted to it. Yeah, it, it should, yeah. in theory, right, it should reduce the amount of people <clears> getting <throat> addicted to something like this faster, you know, or lesser, right? Yeah, that could be a potential thing there. But I think, yeah. you know, it, it, needs, it needs a proper um, somebody who knows about addiction and uh, somebody who knows how people work. Um, yeah and to, to really understand it and i think you know i don't know if jagex have done it or not but if they've they've got the experts to come in and the psychologists to come in to help and say right the best thing you can do to help these people is this then um i, I would i would hope so, they've done that but they, they might not so have do you, are you kind of saying in a sense that jagex may feel slightly obligated to keep it as a thing because they've effectively started these addictions for certain people and they kind of feel obligated to keep it so they don't end up going down a darker path. Would that be oh, fair I, to I, say? I, I, there is a potential that getting rid of it will do more harm to the most vulnerable people than less harm. And that, to me, is the focus. It's not about Jagex, it's about the vulnerable people who are in that area. So, and how to okay. get the best of the ability. And they're the people that you need to focus on to solve the problem. So we're calling staking gambling, right? Like, that's what we're going with? Because um, just to compare it to other games that have gambling in it and then got prosecuted, right? Let's talk about CSGO. CSGO with their uh, skin gambling, right? Mm. Now, I don't think CSGO did it on their main page, but it'd be content creators opening up their gambling sites. I think RuneScape even has this to a certain extent. And from, from somebody watching content creators do this and thinking, wow, that's really free money. It's easily accessible. And they go over to RuneScape and then they see debt streamers, right? Mm. Since PvP has been dying, and we're not talking about PvP yet, a lot of these guys go into debt streams, and they constantly yeah. have in their title down 50 bill. What was Oda down? 260 bill? That's a quarter of a million dollars almost yeah. in real life. <laughs> Absolutely crazy. So how I see it is it's, it's not even that they're helping with these addictions. It's almost like they're starting these addictions, especially when it comes to content creating. So not only can you do debt streams, and that's completely okay nowadays. But you can get subscriptions from losing your bank. You could, you can get donations. You can have people fund your gambling problem. Uh, I know people who have been streaming for years, and they have paid off houses from gambling, right, just because people are funding it. I, I'm not sure where that road will lead these guys down. So in, in my opinion, that's kind of how I see it, is that the Dorina maybe uh keeping some of these people from losing their mind going down a darker path but i, I just still think it's taking people down the darker path whether it's it's there or not it, it, it just the debt streamers man yeah if i was if i was still there i would ban debt streaming by now yeah um, i would have banned it as soon as it appeared um it, you remember the days when we used to have um and commission staking mm -hmm. without fail everybody who uh, you know 90 percent of people who did that cheated um they'd have ways they'd fight their friends and then keep the money um they would have fake overlays on their accounts to make it look like they lost when they won and all, all sorts of weird and you could see it blatantly in the back end yeah um you could see how you know the money they'd lost and they told people they've lost oh sorry you've lost your money i'm not very good sorry about that and it circles through <laughs> five Ends back in there, half of it ends back in their account again, and then it gets real well traded off. And you're like, you know, yeah, everybody people like watching it too. People love yeah. love to watch it. They'd be like, oh no, he lost. They do, oh, you got scammed. They come and watch people get scammed. Yeah. Right? That's entertainment as well. So it almost doubles down on the whole content creator. It's side. so shady, man. God. Yeah. So and I would Matt. not doubt that those debt streamers are doing exactly the same stuff. It's so oh, God. obvious oh, to tell, man. If you donate now, you get half my next gamble or what? It's like, come on, man. Jeez. So people, yeah. people are insanely addicted to staking. Like they, they just are. Like if you go and chuck up like a staking stream, I can guarantee you'll get a bunch of new viewers coming in. Where there are people that are addicted to it, 
who might be cleaned or whatever, where they can't afford yeah. to do it themselves, and they physically watch somebody gamble because, like, they're kind of getting that that hit. But, oh, uh, what do you think, Matt? We've spoken about it a fair bit now. An idea that I had for the deal arena in a way that would stop, hopefully, people RWT in the goals and mm. kind of push those people out of the game, but still having the Doodle Arena how it is, just with making it worse odds. So at the moment, I believe it's a 5 or 10% tax on your winnings. Uh, in my eyes, I'm like, what if they were to up that tax to a point where if you're simply doing staking for money, it's like you have worse odds than just going on to some online casino and putting your money on black. Like, mm. do you think that, could potentially be a solution for that. And then it would just leave people that want to stake and they're not too fussed about if they lose their whole 50 mil. And if they win, they get, say, like 30 mil or whatever it is. Do you think that could be something that would help? I guess the the outcome's the same as getting rid of the jewelry in, it, in itself. If it's no longer profitable for me to make money there, where else am I going to go and do it? Because I'm not going to stop this doing this activity to, to make money. So do I then just move to the wilderness and we do uh, death matches in the wilderness? Does yeah. that, is that well, um, based, based on like just years of talking to people nowadays, you know, through streaming, it might be slightly biased, but it's just the sheer amount of people that I know that have been addicted to staking and wants to get out. It's, it's crazy. It's every day, you know, like mm -hmm. new people never seen before comes in always saying like, ah, oh, yeah, you know, I quit the game because I got I got too into it. Like, or I had to play an Iron Man because there was no way I could actually enjoy this game anymore because I would always just stake all my shit if I got bored or if I got angry. You know, it's just like, damn, there's just so many of these people that just, you know, somehow just get streamlined into this, into this, you know, like staking. And, and yeah, they just never come out the same way, you know, like they never feel the game the same way anymore, you know, after that. So. It's too easy money, but it's also too easy to lose. Yeah, and yeah it's too easy to access is, yeah. is honestly what I've so, noticed. It, it, I, I think, like, here's the thing, like, going back to the original question, which we haven't actually got to yet, I think probably one of the biggest, like, fundamentals here is does a player RWTM from the Doodle Arena effectively hurt the game outside of, obviously, you're talking about shareholds, and so forth. Do you think with that out on the side, do you think it actually hurts the game, Matt? Not the game. I think some individuals it does, but not the yeah. game. Okay. Yeah. It's the individual I think that's out in the game. It, it's more than just it's a quite a complex thing, isn't it? Because like you said, it's like if you remove it, it probably causes more damage than it would fix because people would end up doing it elsewhere and it not being regulated and seeing how it actively doesn't hurt the game i would say that's like the lesser of two evils in a sense but i completely agree with you boys like it definitely like i've never gambled in my life i don't gamble but i was really addicted to staking like back in pre-eoc and even my early days of runescape mm -hmm. and the way that i overcame that was i literally quit the game because um i had to take a break i took like two years off because mm. it got to a point where the only thing I enjoyed about RuneScape was making money from the, the casino. And it took me about two years of not playing the game, where I eventually started to think in my mind, instead of how much money I could win, I started thinking about, God, I'd love to just log into RuneScape and just like walk around in a specific area for nostalgia and yeah. just have that, you know, like that that love for the, the game, the passion just came back. But... It so, so you're saying all God, stakers it's, it's should take a two-year break and they'll be fine, is what you're I mean, them. it's it's not for it's my friend. Same with any addiction, dude. <laughs> no, he's gone. It's, it's over. They need a rehab, it's bro. Hard. It, oh, dude, it's so complicated, Matt. If you if you were working at Jagex right now and you had the choice, if so, if one of the higher ups came up to you and said, Matt, it's your choice, mate. You can either get rid of the doodle arena right now. You can eat the red pill, get rid of it, or you can swallow the blue one and let it stay which pill would you take i mean i had that choice that's the thing um the way i wanted to approach it was to find out what would happen if we got rid of it what is the truth behind it because i think a decision like that shouldn't be based on opinion gut instinct 
You need to look at the information about what would actually happen and get the experts in. And my biggest concern throughout the entire thing was the people who are addicted to gambling, the people who have a problem and are suffering personally um, uh, through the mental health things that come with gambling. How do we make sure they're the people who we're focusing on and supporting and what the output, the output is? And that, to me, is is what we needed help with at that point. Um, and to do that, we I, I felt we needed to bring in um, proper psychologists um, who understood gambling, gambling addiction, and how we can best uh, best support the most vulnerable people. That's a good answer, man. I just wanted to bring up this one content creator. I, I can't remember his name, but he was a I don't know if he's a debt streamer, but he would he was a staking streamer. And apparently he just lost a huge stake. And I went to go watch. I Sometimes you want to watch him lose. I don't know. Just a human instinct. And he loses. And apparently at the end of every stake, he'd do a giveaway. So his chest like, giveaway! We want items! And you could hear his voice get shaky, right? Like he's about to break down. He goes, oh, okay, guys. What do you want? And he opens up his bank and it's just, there is nothing but just invisible items. You know, you got zero Pagasian, zero twisted bow. He's like, what can I sell here? And he's decanting like, we're unimbuing these berserker rings. And I'm thinking, dude, this is the saddest shit I've ever mm. seen. And his chat is just still screaming giveaway, you know, no love for this guy. They're like, you know what? Drop your rings, unimbue them. We want them. <laughs> Clear oh, your man. bank, bro. And I, I don't even know if he's, that guy's still streaming to this day, man. Hope he's good. But I just, I thought I'd share that story while we're on the duel arena, man. Yeah, this people people want to watch the world burn, don't they, at times? <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, like, it's crazy. I, so, God, this is frustrating because it feels like we're going in circles with this. But from what I'm hearing, the main concern coming from you yeah. is if they did remove the duel arena, it would be a case of A, they would find another way to do it that would be unregulated and b people who are addicted it kind of sounds like jagex may be taking the position of they're kind of responsible for that addiction mm -hmm. which to be fair i would also agree with that um it the trouble with it is is like if it remains and it stays it's only going to get worse right it's like this kind of needs to be addressed in a big way or otherwise this pit, this hole that's being dug is just going to get deeper and deeper. It's just like the botting problem, really. You know, if you let it run rampant, next thing you know, we got 20% Ironman accounts, 80% but, but bots, right? That, that's the thing. No, I would disagree because botting no. is being dealt with to a degree because the accounts mm. are being banned. But that's the people true. that are getting addicted to staking, they're not getting any help. And it's kind of like, it's like, where do you stand with that? Do you just look at it as like, oh, well, that's your own problem. You have to deal with it. Or is it like us at Jagex? Yeah. We may have actually caused this by allowing you to do this content. Like, it's mm -hmm. actually a really big issue that needs to be addressed. Yeah, like and it's funny because it's got nothing really to do with the toxicity, although that's messed up and it's horrible in its own way. It's not the actual root issue here, right? It's like, this needs to be dealt with. But how do they deal with this? Like they talk to a, a therapist or talk to a psychologist and make like the nurses in the do arena give you like some advice or something. <laughs> it just seems so crazy that it's gone on for this long. It definitely, there has to be like an alternative. There has to be something. Yeah, I and think I, it's maybe, I don't yeah. know, maybe a different, a different kind of gambling that people could do. Yeah. Horse um, racing. I don't know. There you go on RuneScape, dude. Maybe like, you might, the RNG. Maybe. Just get on a random horse. You got to look at it from a moral point of view. Like, is this video game, is is it is it something that at its core supposed to support people getting addicted to gambling, right? It's it's a simple question. Do you want this game yep. to support people playing its game and get addicted to gambling? Pure, simple. It's a simple question. Does this game support that? Should this game support that? The answer should be no. You know? Yeah. Right? At the end of the day. So. But the other thing as well is, and I don't know, I mean, we're making a whole bunch of assumptions that yeah. um, there is an addiction to gambling and people are getting addicted to that. Um, it seems sensible assumption to make. What we don't have is, is that actually happening? And Jagex would be able to see that. Are the same accounts doing it over and over and over again? Are they losing money suddenly, real world trading the money back on, losing it? That behavior can be seen. Um, whether the question to me is, I mean, the, what the examples I gave were two potential outcomes of the study that I asked for. If the study hasn't been done, 
that there's they've got no data to go mm-hmm. one way or another. Um, but it, it could be solved if it was looked into, and it could be they've already looked into it, and there really isn't a problem there. Um, but they're not going to come out and say, guys, stop worrying about the gambling stuff. We've looked into it. No one's really addicted to it. I mean, no one's going to believe that if they come out and say that. So why would they? So the best option would be may- maybe to them to say nothing. Um, and there really isn't a problem anyway. But again, I don't know. This, this is, you've got to think of both sides of the story here and what could the potential outcomes be. And we're only sort of postulating on on, on, on one of them. Yeah, that's and true. They've, got, they've got the data to see, um, and they may have looked at it. They may not have done. I don't know. It's it's just nice to know that not only you, but I assume you deep conversations have been had on Jagex about this problem, right? It's just nice yeah. to know they 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 recognize it from your point of view, and who knows if they're going to solve it. But it's nice that they know. I just I just didn't realize they did know, right? They never say anything about it. Yeah, all. I mean, there's there's, there's... I mean, what you've got to think about is everything the community talks about as well, and the big issues are generally known within Jagex discussions that had around them. Um, a whole bunch of them um, they can't really talk about publicly um, because some of them are very difficult to talk about. Some of them you can't give an answer that anybody really wants, um, and some of them are just plain wrong. And if you put yourself up saying, no, actually, you community are wrong, there's no evidence to show that's even happening, that that's never worked. Mm. Um, so some of them they're probably just going to keep quiet about it, even though there's no problem there. But generally, I mean, the way the way to think about Jags is generally they're good guys. They're not there just to just to grab money. Um, the people there are people who care at every level. Um, there are some people who are there just to grab money. Um, but then uh, you have all sorts of different people who who have different yeah. sorts. Of and I assume those work. aren't J mods, right? Because I heard J mods don't make that much. Sadly, right? I don't know who'd be there just to claim the money on that part. Maybe. No, no. I mean, so by that, I mean there's people whose job it is to make to make money for Jagex, um, and they're fo- primarily focused oh, at the, gotcha. on yeah. the flip side of that. You've got people whose job it is to make sure that um, the right things are being done, and that uh, we're living to the values of the game, uh, or living to the values of the company, um, rather than just making s- selling things for the sake of selling them. Yeah. Um, so that, that's the thing there. As for Jagex people not making a lot of money, that's not that's not true either. I think they oh, pay. No? Oh, well, apologize for assuming. Yeah. Sorry, I just heard from other GMods. I don't know. I, I think what's happened is that I mean the problem you got with the whole gaming industry is the gaming industry is not near the top of the pay rates for anything. So if you're Jagex, you want to employ all these gaming people. Um, who want to work in the gaming industry, you want to pay them a living wage so they can actually live um, comfortably enough um, in uh, in Cambridge um, or worldwide now because apparently they don't work in the office anymore. Um, so they um, so they pay a, a good wage for that, um, but they don't overpay. But then if you can compare the gaming industry to the industry I'm in, um, my industry pays 50% more than you pay in the gaming industry for the same job. And that's just that's just how how it works. And if you go to America and you look at just raw numbers, America is going to pay another fifty percent on what I get paid, um, because there's a whole different economics that work in there. Tax systems are different. So when you sort of sit there as an American looking at your starter developer at Jagex earning twenty six thousand, you're like, oh my god, how can you even get out of bed for that amount of money? <laughs> so in the UK, in Cambridge, in that industry, it's fine. And what is you should be. I- I just money. got a question about the housing. Actually, is it is it really decent to live there with the payment and the housing? I heard it's expensive to live around uh, headquarters. No, expensive to live everywhere. I mean, it's no no great drama. You got when you look at housing, you need to look at uh, the cost of your housing plus the cost of your commute into work. Um, I lived I lived an hour out of Cambridge, and you know, absolutely fine. Um, the you can quite easily as a brand brand new starter get a uh, a room in a, a shared house, um, go out every weekend. I mean, you can buy yourself Lamborghinis or anything, but um, you know, you could have you could have a good quality of life as a brand new starter straight out of university <clears throat> into a gaming job, um, with all the all the benefits that come with that as well, and uh, ability to to progress. Yeah. Um, but the way I I always look at comparing wages across different um, countries things is how much money have you got left at the end of the month after you've paid for all your necessities so you've paid your tax you've paid your national insurance or whatever it is you have in other countries 
Um, you pay your food, you pay your rent, you pay your petrol, you pay your heating, electricity, all that sort of stuff. The amount of money at the end should be pretty comparable for the same jobs. And that's how yeah. you sort of these things. And J- Jagex are all right. They don't. They're, that, they they yeah. pay all right. That okay. makes that makes a fair bit of sense, to be fair. And um, you know, a lot of this conversation, like obviously, we've taken full advantage of having you on, Matt, because you have a lot of insight and I feel like you're the perfect person to ask these tricky questions to. So sorry if it's been, you know, a little bit on the darker side of issues and so forth, but I think that something that's worth pointing out is that, you know, on the conversation of there being specific people working at Jagex that are there simply to make money. Like that's just business at the end of the day. Like there's nothing wrong with that, but let's point out a few things that actually are good with old school Ringscape. Okay. So, Something which I've seen recently, and Matt, I don't know how much of an eye you keep on this, um, but in the last, I think, two years, maybe three, World of Warcraft effectively yoinked RuneScape Classic and now have World of Warcraft Classic. Mm. And so it's basically based on the same premise as old school RuneScape. People were fed yeah. up with the way the main game was, loads of MTX and stuff like that. And they wanted to have you know that nostalgic ride. They wanted to have a game that didn't have MTX. And after only the short amount of time that World of Warcraft Classic's been a thing, they're now introducing MTX. Everything that the players didn't want is now being put into the classic vanilla client. And I think that when you look at that, it's very obvious the reason why it's being done right. It's like, clearly, they're going to make a shit ton of money off of this. Now, if you compare that to old school RuneScape, it's like, so maybe we've had our membership increased once maybe twice in the years it's been out but we've had nothing compared to that like on any scale it's like they clearly could have done it i'm not going to mention any names but in some of my trips when i went to jagex i did have some higher ups like asking us and asking me how i would feel if they were to add some kind of like cosmetic into the game that you would either pay for or not pay for and things like that and um you know just being an old school player I was always very simply and just, no, I don't want it. I think that's a terrible Mm -hmm. idea. And I just gave my honest opinion on it. And I I understand the guy asking me, obviously, he's just trying to look out for the the company's best interest, the more money it makes, the longer it lives and so forth. But like, we can sit around and we can, you know, complain about things in the game that aren't going well. And sometimes it's justified and sometimes it isn't. But at the end of the day, I feel like Jagex have been very good with old school RuneScape in that sense. Because if they wanted to add, you know, MTX to the game, it's like, from a business standpoint, they are dumb for not doing it. And it's clear that there's still enough people that are passionate about the game that have enough of a say and sway with those higher ups at the company right now where that isn't happening. And I Mm -hmm. think that's something which really isn't spoken about enough and should be congratulated because most other games, like Blizzard, for example, with WoW Classic, like they did that after less than half of the time the old school runescape's been alive that that's yeah. kind of that's quite I, eye-opening i'd say i also heard their game is pretty dead now like no one's playing vanilla anymore all my friends who were on it the first couple of weeks and they had to wait hours to get on for that server wait doesn't exist no more even uh what's that guy you watch rakesy the the top dude on a asmund golds yeah he's hmm. not even playing yeah. it and he was getting 100 no, viewers he's yeah. moved on bro so but that's dude that's really interesting because there was a video on it recently I watched. I think he was watching a video, like a reaction to it. And it was basically talking about Blizzard and how that games company went from originally being like a small company, probably, I don't know if it was, it was probably always bigger than Jagex, but the core components of that team and business, it was based upon passion. And sure, there was a business model to it, but the game was actually made for pure passion which is why people always look at WoW and it, why it has always been so successful. And I feel like RuneScape is on that same level in a lot of ways. Um, but World of Warcraft and Blizzard went super corporate and the people that they start employing to work on the game, they're not there because they love the game. It's not You're not employing mod ashes to come and work there. You you're, employing, you're employing Only guys one. that are literally there. Only mm. one. Only they're one. employing guys that are simply there for one reason, and that reason is... You get a raise. How do you get a raise? You make more money for your company. It's like you have to do these things. So I, I just think that that's something that should be spoken about more with Jagex. Like the fact they haven't added MTX after eight years into a game, it's I think that's great. 
I really do. And I think I, I can pat them on the back enough for that, to be honest with you. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, so, I mean, I had I had multiples of these conversations with multiple people, and every time a new senior person joined, they'd say, right, you need to put MTX in the games. Like, no. <laughs> no, and so now I'll explain why over the next three weeks until you understand it. It was um, multiple I, attempts I for MTX then on old school? Yeah, and wow. it's the right, it's the people coming in who are making the right, um, asking the right questions. So it's blatantly no other questions. Said, you know, just as Rakesy said, to make more money for the company, we should put MTX into old school because they didn't understand why it shouldn't be. And a lot of my time was spent making them understand why it shouldn't be. And uh, before I left, sort of the, one of the last things I did before I left was to do a, a huge study on um, what would happen if we put MTX on, so how, how the community would accept MTX uh, into the game. Uh, mainly because I'd, I'd thought knew what the answer would be. And we did. I did a whole bunch of interviews with with people from all around the world. We travelled uh, travelled all over the place to to get this information, and we put together different scenarios. And um, we, were, we were quite mean to some of these. We these RuneScape players. We would interview in a group of uh, you know twelve of them, and we would we would be quite mean to them, saying, "Look, the game's dying. If we don't get more money in the game, we're going to start losing um, support. The development team will get smaller." Um, so we need to make more money. How do we make more money? What MTX can we put into game to keep the game alive? And that was the pitch we put out to people we're interviewing. It was complete bollocks. It wasn't true at all. But that was that was what we wanted to find out. As if we put made it sound like the game was dying, um, and they've got six months to play it before it disappears. Would they accept MTX? And even pushing to the point of, you know, these hardcore players, you've got six months left. They wouldn't accept anything except a cosmetic now and then. Mm. I'd rather let the game die than um, hardcore. I love item. It. And these were these were just people that were pulled from the, all different areas. I mean, we must have interviewed several hundred people in these these things. Um, so we've got a huge cross breadth of different people. And then being able to go back after that and say, look, even if the game's dying, people will not accept MTX. And uh, you know, we 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 always had some people in tears by pitching this thing to them. Oh, <laughs> oh, no. You're like, no. I feel really bad about this, but we did this deliberately for a reason. So I'm really sorry that we've 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 oh. messed you out here and done this sort of stuff. But we had to do it to find out what you really thought. Um, so you know, there's some very angry people, but but it was really valuable because we needed to really understand where that mm -hmm. point was. People, the community would accept MTX, and it just doesn't exist. I've been able to put that into a report and saying, look, if you put MTX in, the game will die. From everything that we've done, all the information is telling us that even if the game is dying, people won't accept it. So if you put it in, people will leave in droves. And uh, sort of the qualification for me um, that that had actually been heard was when I left and they put um, the job replacement out for um, Mike D. Um, he uh, the job the job the job um, description said. You're in the unique position of having to find ways to make more money out of old school RuneScape without MTX. And I was like, yes. It's <laughs> <laughs> <That's crazy. laughs> only taken however many years to get to a position where it's accepted by the company. We're not well done, do well done, well done, well done. I'm a little yeah, curious. Well the MTX that the higher ups were talking about, did they have actual ideas on what they would bring into the game? Or yeah, just like what R3 thing? has, you know? Yeah, yeah I mean. That they just look at whatever League of Legends were doing and say, so what League of Legends are doing, because they make lots of money. <laughs> that, that was the level of thought that had gone into it. And, I mean, you got to remember, they didn't... These were new people to the company. They were brought in to help support um, old school, um, to help make more money out of it, but couldn't understand... But when they joined, they didn't understand why uh, MTX in, a game was, mm -hmm. in the game was so crippling, um, or could be so crippling. And that, that was just part of my role, was to make sure these people understood. Mm -hmm. um, and Make, making sure that the right decisions were, were being made in the end. And at times I had to rely on the um, the rest of the team to back me up as well. Because so even yeah. when people were ignoring me and saying, right, we're going to do this, I'm like, look, you can't. Yeah. Right, okay, pitch it to the team then. And <laughs> so then the team would there. Asked and, this. Uh, so if you were in your role during that time, possibly someone else is filling that position, do you think MTX would be in old school right now? Oh, it depends who it was. Um, I knew how bad it was, but then I knew how bad it was because I played RuneScape for mm -hmm. fifteen years. Um, so if it were, if you'd have picked up a product manager off the um, wall, off off the you know off the street, 
um, or from any other gaming company, I would not expect they that the the, the the I would not think they could have stopped uh, MTX getting into the game. So you pretty much held the door closed. Um, MTX. It, wasn't, it wasn't wasn't me. I I it was me and the team. Me and the team. Okay. Yeah, I was to make yeah, sure I was doing the right things. The A team. Um, all right. That saved old school pretty much. Yeah, and I mean, I, I got some decisions wrong, and they told me when I got them wrong, and they argued with me when I was making the wrong decisions, and that that's what I relied on. Um, so yeah, it, it wasn't a, a me or anything else. It was a, it was a, it was an us. Yeah, we just yeah. agreed with the team. I just that's remember really you guys were really small back in the day, you know, like oh, yeah. it was like literally less than ten people for a while, right? Like, so well, at least in the forefront, it was like less than ten people. The, the thing is, like I. There is a little bit of concern for me when it comes to this still, and there always will be. And I think that concern comes from a place of, as the old school devs that are working on old school RuneScape, you know, whether they retire or whether they leave for another position or something like that, it's like, I, I feel like the reason why that probably happens is because yourself and a lot of the other JMods, if not all of them, had been working at Jagex for a long time. Throughout the uh, pre-OC evolution of combat runescape free era so you have you know hands-on experience like you've lived through that you've mm. seen how the how the people reacted to mtx how furious people were and the thing that concerns me as the old school members sort of like the devs leave for whatever reason if that were to happen it's like that kind of presence of mind would no longer be there and they also probably wouldn't see it the same way as the old school devs look, uh, look at it. So whenever I see like a really old school developer leaving, like God, if Mod Ash were to just be like, "Sorry guys, I'm leaving Jagex," the stock I would be tank. like, you I would be leave. terrified. <laughs> I would yeah. be really worried. So Matt, is it fair to say that that is a genuine concern, or do you think that like the old belief system that you OG uh, devs had? would sort of stand up with a new team or do you think it would just be forgotten about so i think that there's two people who i know in the team um would worry me if they left obviously one would be ash um the other one would be uh rock um, i assume he's still there of course they're the two they're the two the most vocal about what doing what's right and what's wrong and um, it's not to say others don't believe in the same thing i don't know about any of the new guys either but those two, when I was there, were certainly the most vocal when it came to this is wrong. Um, we shouldn't be doing this. Um, so those two would worry me if they left. However, um, again, when I left, I knew that the CEO of the company knew, um, believed what old school was and believed that approach. Um, whether he's able to instill that approach across the entire company, I don't know. Um, but I know he believed it, so he was almost like the saving grace of 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 uh, the last wall of defense. Had I failed, I think would fall yeah. the scene you know, into to do something. So we're in good hands awesome. now. Four now. Yeah, mm -hmm. four, yeah, yeah, four, four now. now. Yeah, God. I mean, so because the company changes people, so yeah, as long as you have the core, I guess, like fundamental, you know, like tenants, right? Hopefully. Enforced yeah. by those people, then we should be in good hands. But yeah. okay, I don't know the new guys. I mean, the new guys could be more stoic than Ashes, in which case you're all in good hands. I don't know what. Uh, yeah, like. I would say like mod husky and stuff. They're all very um, integrity driven. Yeah, they're very yeah. integrity driven. So it's good. We yeah. definitely have yeah. some good ones out here. Yeah, yeah. so I'll so, so be fine. Mm -hmm. um, so Matt, if um, let's say theoretically, in what world would you ever go back to work in a Jagex? Would they have to? Would they have to give you a raise, or would you willingly go back to the company? Or like, how do you feel about that? What about just yeah, like a big because statue in Varan? If I can add to that real quick, I, I feel like I feel like in some ways the old school team at this particular time they're missing that vocal member of the team because I feel like. You brought that in such a big way, man. Like, God, people always harp on about Mod Ash, and I love him a bit, sure. But you did such an amazing job when you were there at Jagex, and you were such a, a vocal point for that team. And I feel like right now, that leadership, I, I, I'm not seeing it. It's not It's not so vibrant as what it was when you were there. Mm. I appreciate it's that. It's so diversified. Sorry, sorry. 
Yeah, the um, I mean, I always felt that my role was um, when I was leading the team was to be that shield in front of the team. So when anything bad happened, I deliberately willed myself out because I didn't think it was fair or anyone else to to do it. Um, but I think I was in quite the unique position to be able to do that uh, because obviously I had a lot of history at Jagex, and you know, whoever they bring in isn't going to have that history. So if Mike D um, was rolled out every time something bad went up and speak to the community, would people really listen to him? Um, he's new. People will, you know, he's he'd only been there for what, two years, I guess, before before he left. Um, would, would that have had the same impact? I don't know. Um, in which case, is there anybody who could say it? I mean, Ash, it wouldn't be fair to get Ash to stand up in front of everybody and say everything um, uh, when everything goes wrong, because that's just not 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 what his role is and not not Ash or something that Ash wouldn't enjoy that much. Mm. Um, but I always felt that was, that was a really important thing. Um, what would make me go back? Um, I, I don't know. Um, I mean, money's never been a thing. I've never been motivated by money. So, I mean, that's, that's just a, 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 a long question, really. Um, I can't see a way of me going back anytime soon. Do you I think there needs to be changes to the company. Oh, God. I mean, what I miss is I miss working with a team. I miss um, being creative with a game. I miss... Uh, uh, the community as well, but okay. I've got, the biggest thing I miss is the community. But I've still got you guys, so because obviously I stream and I talk on Twitter and all that other stuff. I'm still part of that, so uh, so that, that's that's I've still got that, and that that to me is the most valuable thing. Um, but yeah, I I if I'm honest, I can't see me me going back. I don't think me going back would necessarily be a good thing for what the company wants. I think if a company was to change and uh, um, not have the massive growth plans that they've got and um, and allow us to continue pushing the game um, for the sake of pushing the game, um, maybe. But that's not what companies are there for. Companies are there to make money. And yeah, uh, I would, I, I, I don't think I'd feel comfortable uh, doing yeah. that. I think one of the biggest problems you've got is if you work on something you love, you're so emotionally attached to it that it's very difficult to make the right decisions sometimes. And it's very difficult to make the right decisions for the company. Um, and without the company, the game doesn't exist. And I don't think I'd be the right person to be making those decisions now. Um, so I probably wouldn't help the game an awful lot if I did get back. I think the position I'm in now where I'm not emotionally attached to the product that I'm building other than I'm building it, um, I, I can easily make the decisions where it's like, oh, it hasn't worked. Never mind. Let's crack on. Um, or, oh, we've just pivoted to go, to look at this new industry. Okay, let's just can that work and do this instead. Um, and that's something which is you know better for me. It's it's a lot less stressful for me. Um, and I can still love what I love. I can still love the game, and I can still love the community. And I just don't have to get the stress behind it of having to uh, to manage it and uh, make sure it all is is going in the right place. Um, Fair I'll enough. I'll give you a yeah. scenario here, man. So. Five years later, say there's only about 20,000 people playing old school. They've added a bunch of stuff no one likes. PvP's a ghost town like it already is. It's absolutely dead. And the Queen of England calls you and says, hey, you got you to gotta come back to work, man. You got you to gotta get over here, bro. Would you still say no? Um, yeah. five years time, I'll probably be all right. I should be retired by then, so that'll be fine. Hey, five years. Oh, yeah. I'll also, also bring back the psychic mod Audi. You know, <laughs> bring back. Oh, yeah. 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 Mint, Mint, when you just said that about the world being a ghost town, I just had an image. Like, imagine if they made it so there were just there was just like ten revenant ancient macers that would roam around and smite anybody that came. In. <laughs> okay, uh, I they think never it's time log for out. Me to, uh, I think it's time for me to start asking some questions here. So, so what was the drama with uh, Mod Reach that long time ago? Because the obviously, when, when you were working, you couldn't you couldn't say say it, you know, right? You couldn't say say it in in a way that like we 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 couldn't we couldn't really figure it out, right? So, what did he do exactly? You know, that got him that got him fired. Um, Wait. so I, I don't say everything about Mod Reach because he's still a friend. Um, yeah. so I sort of, um, don't, don't say an awful lot more. Uh, he, um, all, all the rumors that are out there are wrong. 
Um, so things about the court okay. sort of stuff, they're all wrong. You um, just have an Audi? Or... <laughs> <laughs> That's oh. wrong. No, I've seen his picture. It's not Photoshop. No. <laughs> um, but um, he had... Uh, he, he real-world traded money from the game, um, made himself some money. He had his reasons for doing that. Um, uh, and... Um, it's you know it's it is what it is. You get caught doing that, you get fired. It's it's pretty straightforward, and he, he got caught. Risk, doing it. I see. And uh, he got fired, um, which is pretty much it. Um, I think I don't know how how much he's spoken about it as well. I know he did an interview with Shawnee. And I don't know how much detail he went into, um, but he he had his reasons, and um, those reasons seem like good reasons. And um, I I harbour no ill will to him at all. Still consider him a friend, and he just did something silly and. Yeah, I got caught doing it. Um, but that was all it is. Yeah, okay. Jed, on the other hand, he's a complete Ooh. cop. Oh, oh, oh damn. Get to those go, I was just about to ask about Jed. <laughs> Me actually. too. What's going on with him? <laughs> yeah, I was I about to cool. ask as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So, um, our friend Jed. Um, cool. So I got fun. a call from. Um, Cambridge Constabulary, uh, a, a police force in the UK, and they said, this is after I left Jagex, and they said, Matt, I believe you uh, ran investigations into Jed Sanderson. Um, can you tell us what's going on? Because we're, we're looking at prosecuting him. And I was like, okay, yes, of course. <laughs> um, but it effectively started, obviously you all know about the um, complaints that Frontline made against him, and they hacked some of his pages and stuff, and I ran the investigation into that side of stuff, and there was no evidence to show that anything bad had happened. There are rumours of him leaking IP addresses um, and all other sort of shady things. Um, but all the evidence that came in, when we tried to find proof, because you can't fire somebody in the UK unless you have proof they've done something wrong, um, you have to have that evidence. There was no evidence there. And uh, so, you know, I sat there and was like, right, I've run the investigation. There is no proof about anything bad happening. It's all just circumstantial. He's been a bit silly at times, but that's about it. So we had a conversation. I said, look, I'm going to go out and say to the community that, you know, we've done the investigation. There's nothing wrong. Leave the lads alone. Um, and I didn't do that for him. I did that for the rest of the team because the rest of the team obviously knew all about this and they were worried. And I felt they needed to know that if somebody was making up stories about them, that Jagex would be on their side and say, we've got their back. So they were the most important thing to me at the time. And I remember speaking to, I'm not going to say who, but one of the, the J mods in the team. And he asked me the question of, well, do you trust him? Um, I was like, not as far as I can throw him because I know there's something going on, but I just can't prove it's it. It's kind of small. You might toss him yeah. a bit far. I don't know. He's yeah, yeah I think I can get him pretty far to be fair. Um, <laughs> and, like um, exactly. And uh, so, uh, so, so I, I went out in front of the community and said, Look, there's nothing going wrong with him. I've done the investigation, nothing's come up. There's no proof. These are just allegations. We can't find anything else. Um, dead, closed, buried, um, done. And then a month later, um, we catch him um, breaking into accounts and selling off the gold. Um, and what was happening was he was um, he was uh, hacking into the back end security systems to fake who he was in order to grant appeals incorrectly on accounts so that he could recover them and uh, and. Um, and sell the gold off them. And this was nothing about anything which protected um, players' information or anything like that. It was purely a back-end internal thing. There was nothing that could have been done from outside. Um, So no no one's data was insecure or anything else. It was just about granting appeals incorrectly. Um, But the collateral of what he was doing beyond that was was really quite bad because he was pretending to be other people and he was uh, faking his... um, uh, his profile as somebody else. Other the people who are responsible for making those Ashley. decisions called into meetings um, and disciplinary meetings, saying, "Look, you've given away this account. You shouldn't have done that." Because that's how that's how strict the password requests are. If you crank password requests, it gets checked, um, and if it's done incorrectly and too many are done, you end up losing your job. And there were people on the cusp of losing their job because what he was doing here, and he didn't give a monkey's about that. He was just worried about getting the money. And this is all stuff I found out afterwards. Um, when I originally found out what he was doing, I was actually at my brother-in-law's wedding. And I get a call from my boss and said, Matt, we need to talk. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> That's the right day for oh, it. And he oh. told me what was going on. Um, and I was like, you know, it's, it's nuts, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's insane. 
he's been suspended, he's been done. Um, but the worst thing for me was when he was on the accounts, um, he wasn't just taking the gold off and selling it and selling all the tradable items and, and you know, making as much money as he could. Because I, I could understand it if he was just stealing money. I, under I understand that people want he to do that. I don't agree with away it. tradables. Do that. But yes, yeah, dropping the untradables. Are you, which are you kidding okay. me? Yeah. Oh, it was, it goblin. oh my god, Man. bro. And, and you look at that and you go, that's just a. Yeah, how, do you, yeah. Like, how do you explain that behavior? Were you thrown that, as a child? Like, who does that? Dude, I mean, make some rock, money, you know, but you know, too much time. Drop and void? God, yeah, that's, that's messed evil. up. I remember I saw him at the after party at RuneFest, and I remember I didn't speak to him. I obviously didn't think very much of him, but I just remember seeing his smug little face, and I was like, just such ratty behavior. Like, he turned up after all the J mods had gone. It's just like, Jesus Christ, grow a fucking sack, man. But, like, yeah, did they ever catch him? Is he, like, on the run? Like, what's the deal with this guy? Oh, no, he just... he, 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 he's changed his name. Um, so I caught up with quite a close friend of his um, about a year he later. changed his name? I so he did a going. double name change like they do with, when PKers die. <laughs> <All right. laughs> because if you, just, if you apply for a job as Jed Sanderson and they just type your name into Google, all you get is pages and pages of uh, what he did. <laughs> Um, so he was never getting a job, so he had to change his name. Um, and uh, the police froze his bank account details, or well, froze his bank accounts because of the fraud that was uh, involved. Um, I don't know if, I mean, it didn't go to a public prosecution, which in the UK, if you are prosecuted to public prosecution, all information becomes public. And as no one's ever found that information, um, I'm guessing um, uh, it, it doesn't, it didn't happen. Um, so it could be that they, the Jaggets came to a deal with him to let him let him go and not pursue him further. If they, I don't know, if he paid back the money or gave it charisma, I don't know. Um, oh my god! But yeah, um, but yeah. So um, what? What a little scumbag, quite frankly. I know. can't believe he um, named. Damn. I can't so, believe he told us he name changed. That's that's insane uh, information, bro. Thank you. Yeah. How long did he work at Jagex for? I don't know, two years, two, three years, something like that. Ah, okay. I, I was just curious if he was there for a long time. And do you know if he was always, was he always a little bit sketchy? Or was it like he kind of got worse over time? Like, like how did he progress in those years? Well, I think, I think for the most part, it was all right. But there was a moment and um, when just weird stuff started happening. And we'd be sitting there working because um, the way that the team was structured at that time, was that your line manager was somebody who did your job. So um, his line manager was a RuneScape 3 um, uh, a lead developer. Um, because obviously I couldn't line manage his development side of stuff because how could I tell him how to develop better? I was like, I don't know. Yeah. Um, so his line manager pointed into somebody with his the expertise he needed to develop himself. And we'd be sitting there around and um, all working away and suddenly we're going, anyone seen Jed today? Oh, he's not here. I wonder where he is. So I go over and talk to his line manager. I say, have you heard from Jed today? He's like, no, no, I've not heard from him. He's like, oh, he isn't over there. So I've certainly seen him. She goes, I'll find out where he is. And then you wouldn't hear anything back for two days. And I go, well, did Jed ever appear? And he's like, yeah, he, he was working from home, but he forgot to tell anyone. I'm like, what's he doing working from home? We don't do that. He's like, oh, he thought it was all right. I thought, like, well, can you sort this out with him? Because he shouldn't keep making those decisions to work from home. And she's like, yeah, I would. And... Uh, and then that just kept happening, and uh, it got to a stage where it was like, and you, you know, we had to sort of sit down in front of them and say, "You can no long, you can no long work from home, no matter what." And next day, he just won't come in and work from home. And then you immediately knew that something was going on, and they just isolated himself. When he would come into the office, he was isolate himself from everyone else. Sounds like um, a yeah. And suddenly, you know, you noticed there was something weird going on, and you know, I was pushing his line manager to say, "Look, you need to get this sorted out." Um, because it's it's just not working, and I, I think his line manager wasn't particularly strong, um, which didn't didn't really help. Did this happen from day one, or was this after oh, like no. a year? This was this was probably about um, six months after mobile had started work. So yeah, probably that's uh, three four months before uh, before he got fired. So I, I I'm kind of guessing then he probably. He probably didn't go into the job with the intention of doing that, 
But I imagine after his friends in Rock kind of figured out where he was working, they they probably put the idea in his head in that case. Oh, would, would you say uh, that's fair? Yeah, I think that's probably what happened. Yeah, that sounds sounds sensible to me. Yeah. Now I have some questions um, about Jed get... as well. Yeah, the, the the biggest thing though is his girlfriend. Did you ever see his girlfriend? Oh, no. no. What she look like? I mean, she she was Premier League. And he was you know he was vocal conference and below. He was. <laughs> <laughs> everyone to me. This just sounds this sounds really bizarre and, and but everyone um within the entire team just couldn't understand how this girl was with him. And uh the story we got back was um she was in Russia, she had to flee Russia from the, some gangsters. And she ended up seeing Jed and we were like, This this don't feel right. This this that just doesn't happen in real life. Um so I, I don't know, it's just weird. So he was in cahoots with a Russian gang? <laughs> Almost? Well, I guess not in cahoots, but like... <laughs> God, yeah, the Russian mafia or something was after her. Dude, was like... ima- imagine if there's like a massive plot twist and it was like, Jed was actually tied up the whole time and it was the Russians doing it. That's free Whoa. Jed. Because <laughs> no, those, no, sure those Russian we women, man. Those Russian women are scary. Doing it, so that's fine. Yeah. That's uh, crazy, man. Jesus. <laughs> But I, I, I still nobody no, English, huh? understand how because he was just a little ratty guy and it's like yeah. So like the well, I mean, I I've never personally done it, but I've heard you can like order brides from Russia. So there's always that. Maybe you just add number? some cash. <laughs> I'm sure there's some websites. <laughs> no, no, was like, her English dude, sufficient? <laughs> Is that what I had? I've only really had a few run-ins with Reign of Terror because I've played this game for like a really long time now. Like. <laughs> Pretty much when RuneScape 2 first came out. So I used to make YouTube videos back, like, God, I think my first YouTube videos were probably, like, from 2006 up until, like, 2008. And my account got hacked by a Reign of Terror member on YouTube, my YouTube account. So Mm. just one day I tried to go on my YouTube, and I was like, wait, I was like, I'm not logged in. What's going on? I went to my YouTube channel, and they were such assholes man they mm. they hacked my youtube for no reason they didn't upload anything they didn't try to get anything from it they deleted all of my videos that were just like my first ever videos and then they, they had a, a link favor. <laughs> back in youtube back in the olden days like your sub count and all your info was on the left hand side and all it said was www.reignofterror.com like three times <laughs> And I was just like these assholes. By, like, because by the way, I PK back say, in those days, so they targeted don't go to, me. But... Don't go to reinaterror.com. Don't log no, in. Don't, don't do click it. on it. There, don't, don't do it. Ever don't do, it. do that. Just because he said it out loud doesn't mean it's safe. Okay, <laughs> do not do that at all. Speaking of Reign of Terror and uh, Jed, the hero here, um, mod, uh, mod Matt, you were in the works of Dead Man Mode, or at least kind of. You were working during that time, right? Yeah, yeah. Like seeing some yes. of it, right? Product manager. Yeah, I, I, I created Dead Man Mode, so uh, yeah. Created, I know. Yeah. Okay. Oh, hell created... the <laughs> anyway, that's um, <laughs> was my Jed involved at all? Because the la- the first couple tournaments, I'm not the first one, but the the next couple, uh, they got Rock got really easy wins. I mean, they found the location Al Karid, which was a one by one entrance, and they could just kill anyone coming in. And the next couple, oh, he definitely ratted it out, 100. percent Right. So I just 100%. wanted to know if my Jed was uh, involved in the Dead Man Mode fiasco. There wasn't. No, the biggest the biggest uh, tell to the fact that he wasn't was. Um, there was a big one we did at Reamfest, I think, which something went wrong. Something went wrong with all of them, didn't it? But something went wrong with it, and um, Jed got there was a huge amount of blame on Jed. Uh, that he'd done this thing, and for the entire time, he was stood next to me. Um, so I know Jed was doing nothing. He was stood there with a computer in front of him that I could see, and so nothing happened. Um, so yeah, so uh, very, very unlikely that any, anything happened. So there was no way he leaked the the end game. Like days before, or or how was that even decided? No, I don't think I don't think he could have done. I'm trying to think okay. about how we put that together on the first few. I mean, he's, first... he's a slippery boy. You never know. <laughs> I mean, but you would know, right? Yeah, because he, 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 kind of he could have just asked one of the other devs that was working on it where the final area was. Like, it might not have been specifically Matt that gave up that information if he's saying that he didn't. Well, how, how taboo was it to talk about the final info? Was that just normal talk again uh, to J Mods? I mean, I yeah, guess 
talking about that. Yeah. I mean, you could easily find it out, but I, I don't think he was that involved with them back in the first few. As in within Reign, with, with Reign of Terror. Well, just I, I remember this Reddit thread being being posted after the tournament went. It would show these pictures of, of ROT members being at Alcarid hours before the tournament even started, and they were scouting it out. And, and it's like, where would that information even come from? Unless it was the luckiest guess of all time. Mm. And... I just I knowing right they don't guess they cheat <laughs> so I I mean if sure. it was if it was widely spoken about I'm sure he could have just WhatsApp somebody and been like yo this is the place you know yeah, what I mean I'm and sure that's it could have happened yeah I think it's unlikely though I don't I don't he wasn't yeah, after that I, small I game no evidences in there okay and they weren't that good at, the, at that one anyway. I yeah. think it just looks it looked really fishy because I think mm -hmm. they won the first few, right? And they were literally in that final area. And the, the dude already know, uh, not dude already, Alcarid was the worst because it was all Morty and there was like one tire tile that you had to filter through to get into the final. Mm -hmm. And Which they just was sat there ridiculous. and mass pressed. Yeah, but then the, the oh. thing that looks really sus is that as soon as Jed left, they lost. So it's just like what the like I think Instantly. that's what it is, but if Matt's saying it was coincidence, well, maybe that was the case. I, I have another question then for this. Uh, do you remember who came up with the idea for the Alcred area and the one by one square entrance for that? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what the fuck was it? I'm joking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I knew he was joking. Dude. Could... Oh, bro, you got me. <laughs> um, can I, you can't remember. No, I don't know. I don't know. Who came yeah, up it did that. happen a while ago. That's fair. Um, uh, I, th I, th I think it's probably Chris Archie led most of the design on the first few. Um, and a lot of it was all about learning about what, what could go wrong. And if you look at the sort of the League of Legends tournaments that went on, the first 20 of those were absolute garbage because they're just learning about how to how to make it work in the game. And the same with ours, the first first half or so were, were just figuring out how you could make it work. I um, remember the Deadly Fog, one-hitting skill specs and Sick Nerd. and Yeah, those, those were great times, man. The, the dead man modes originally. Do you also think, just my last question about Jed, is could he possibly be back in rot right now with some sort of information that, that would be dangerous, right? Any information that he might have been able to grab as a J-Mod, if there would be, is, is that a possibility? I mean, the only information that would be valuable is how to bypass the botting systems. But I, I don't think he knew that. Hmm. There's only a handful that would be, um, and yeah, I mean, not he, he's already in a lot of trouble. So I don't think he want to take any more risks at this point. Well, you he know? did double name change, so he's good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's like that in our our role, but, <laughs> He's yeah. good, man. New lease. Uh, that hey, was Matt, my last what, question. About Matt, you. what would you do or say to him if you just walked into him, like walking down the street, and he was just on the other side with his Russian misses? Like what would you Sandy. do? <laughs> I, I would, I would ask him where he got her from. I would probably just walk straight past and yeah. walk, give it time of day. All right, all right. Let, let's yeah, let's ask Matt about some some positive stuff. You know, highlights in the career of his time. You know, being a part of the old school team, right? Like, what were some of like? Because obviously, product manager could be like a, a role that seems to be kind of like water it can fit in anything right it can fill in a, a bunch of different uh you know aspects of the job but like what were some moments i guess like in terms of your decision making that you felt had had a major impact in the way the game grew like positively speaking you know like like an update that you had a huge say in you know like kind of critical moments i guess for you that really pushed the game yeah. you know? so uh, probably one of the biggest updates was going free to play and oh, I, uh, I had, to, had to push that through because nobody wanted to make the game free to play because there was just worry that um, everybody would go free to play and nobody would pay members anymore. So nobody, you know, none, none of the senior people wanted to make that happen. And I was like, you know, it, it feels like something we should be doing. It's worked in the past. It's something that people are expecting. You know, let, let's try and see what happens. We ran a whole series of tests and stuff, and um, you know, it all went absolutely fine. And so we ended up doing free to play. But the funniest part of the story was actually making it go free to play. Um, so, uh, I was having, um, I was talking with, um, the head of RuneScape at the time that ended up being the CEO, uh, after a while. And, uh, it was like, well, 
we want we want to test this out, but we need to see how much work it is to actually make the game so it can work in free to play. Uh, we don't know how much it is. There's going to be engine work involved, which means it's going to be really difficult. It's going to be complicated. We're going to have to worry about other impacts on the engine, all this other sort of stuff we were worried about. And they said, Matt, why don't you go and speak to Phil about it? And I was like, what? And they meant a guy called Phil Bilby. And Phil Bilby was the head of technology. And he was one of these guys that if you spoke to him and asked him something, his immediate reaction, no, 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 that's a sick idea. Incredibly intelligent guy, incredibly defensive. Um, <laughs> and me and I had this way of dealing with him, which was I would send him an email uh, to say, I'm going to come over and talk to you in a minute. <laughs> I'd then go over and talk to him and say, I'm going to book a meeting with you tomorrow to discuss these points and then leave the conversation there. And then I'd, I'd add him to this uh, meeting um, with all the points listed out we wanted to talk to for the next day. And by the end of the meeting the next day, we generally got what we wanted out of him. But this is an intensive process that we had to go through for him. <laughs> Every so, uh, and uh, when I left sort of, you know, the head of RuneScape's uh, uh, office or desk, because we didn't really have offices, uh, he, he said, go talk to him now, find out how long it would take. And I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't, ain't going to go well. So I walked to him and said, hey, Phil, how long would it take us to make the game go free to play? This <laughs> barrage of abuse that was about to arrive. And he sat there and he went. <laughs> oh my God. That's, a very, that, went, that's a very interesting figure. How, how um, come we never heard of him? You know? Oh, he was, he was yeah, he was, he was a really nice guy. Um, most of the time. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, he, he, just, he typed for about 30 seconds and made it free to play. That's how much effort it took to turn old school free to play. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, it, does it take another 30 to make the wilderness active? Too? Dude, who's, who's this <laughs> legendary head of technology, man? We must. Oh, we he, must... He, left, he left years ago. I think he's working with Andrew at Fen Research, I think. Um, but yeah, he was he was he was he was a clever guy. Um, built most of the technology that that uh, uh, Ruskate was working on, but I think they've moved off it now onto other things. Um, but he left many years ago now. Um, but that that was quite entertaining. So that was that was a big fun moment. Going free to play was a big a big win. We saw a massive boost in uh, players coming in to play the game. Uh, the community really enjoyed it as well, which was which was quite wonderful. Yeah, um, finally can sell the clue scroll stuff to the FTP noobs, you know. Yes. <laughs> uh, right. Another uh, another great moment was Dead Man as well because I remember back in sort of oh five oh six, you'd walk around the wilderness and uh, every time you saw a white dot, your heart would start going. And I was like, how do I create that emotion throughout the rest of the game? And I came out with this concept for Dead Man mode, and we didn't know what to call it at the time. And um, it was a case of very much how Dead Man mode is. You have your safe areas, then you have your dangerous areas. If you die, um, you need to create this huge sense of loss. So you need to lose items, lose items from your bank, lose your XP as well. So the first first draft of this was you just go back to a level three account and start again if you got killed, uh, okay. which would be a bit too punishing. <laughs> so, so we've done that down a bit from there. And um, so I, I pitched this in a Q and A to uh, to the player base. And just saw, I just saw somebody in the chat say, "Lol, it's Dead Man mode," and I was like, "Yes, I'm stealing that name for it." I don't know who that guy was, but uh, but he he was the guy that named Dead Man mode, and it sort of just it just grew from that. And because of the reaction yeah. we got, people kept asking us about it. We developed it and made it happen, and that was uh, that that was a massive success um, when we started making that. That was I mean, a tournament would make Jagex about a million pounds in revenue. Um, and there's a how big of a wow. prize? Applebee's yeah. gift card, or <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're lucky to get her a fucking spot, you know. Um, but was it was it really? You're, you're saying each step on mode tournament made uh, about a million? Yeah, a, a, in the peak, it would make about a million per uh, tournament. Yeah, Wait, that is that point, we just like, need to get. Is that free new membership signups and stuff like that? Yeah. Oh my god. Wow. At Why did point, they we need stop? To get, like, well, actually, no, they did stop for a good reason. It got a bit stale, but God, yeah. you know they how should NASCAR be, they should be putting everything into that. That's insane. you know how NASCAR has the jackets with the sponsors. If you guys are making so much money, you need to get like all those dead memo players up there, and you get like the, I don't know AT and T back there or something. Let's 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 take ten mil quid, man. Yeah, oh, but the problem with Dead Man Mode, the reason why it's not around anymore, and I blame myself for this completely, is that we didn't capitalize on what it could become. And we didn't get the right people in to um, actually drive it forward, um, make the right saying. changes, put the right support into it, and and, and treat it more as a business. Um, we didn't think hard enough about how we get people who just join it just for that uh, two-week gap to 
continue playing long term. We didn't look at how we get sponsorships involved, um, and and all the other so- other sides of the business that we just didn't know about. Um, oh my god! You know, that, we're that, saying, we're that, saying. that reminds me. That reminds me of something that happened. So I'm I'm pretty sure you were there at the time, Matt, and it was uh, Demo Mood Mansions, which oh. I was I was lucky enough to so get invited jealous. to that. So it was fu- it was it was an amazing week because you get to live with content creators and like you got so motivated being around like Alfie was in the room next to me and stuff Torvesta's down the hall but like I remember when I got there they hooked me up with uh I think it was god I can't remember what company it was um it might have been Logitech or something like that it was like a Logitech keyboard and mouse that they gave me like just to use for the week not to keep yeah. and um I took my own stuff and I remember after the actual event, the, the Logitech guys came over to me and they were like, hey, Rixie, you were on the stage. How did you get on this week using our mouse and keyboard? And I just straight up looked at them and I was just like, look, I'm like, I'm sorry, guys. I think your your stuff looks really nice, but I did not get on with it at all. I switched it out for my Razor stuff and they just straight up just like, they were just like, I, I felt bad because they were obviously you like lied, bro. <laughs> And they were like, they literally, the next thing they said to me was, do you know where a friend is? And I was like, yeah, he's over there somewhere. And they just walked off. And I was like, oh my God. Is it but like, dude, I remember, and I'm sure I can say this now. Fuck it. I was told by a Jmod. I think the Jmod's left now. He said after the demo mansions, they were thinking about doing dead man mode castles where they were going to rent out like a massive castle and have loads more content creators and Bro. just like, how sick would that be? It was it was great. We could create a fucking just, Harry Potter of RuneScapers, dude. Hufflepuff. They just they just didn't have enough resources, man. Like we had Chris Archie was looking after one house. He was doing everything on his own. I felt so bad yeah. for him. In our house, we didn't even have a J mod. We had Skiddler and Pure Spam. And the internet was so bad. The internet was so bad, and they didn't figure out the internet. Like we had to take turns streaming because we couldn't all do it at the same time. And yeah. Pure Spam and Skiddler were like, "Well, we're not being paid to be here, so we need to stream as well." So it was just, it was, it was just a bit of a bad plan, I think. But the concept was really good, and I really hope they do that again. That would yeah, be so that, cool. There's a reason why no one's ever tried doing it in the past and since. It's a very difficult thing to do. Um, I mean, you look at people who do the same sort of thing. You talk about Big Brother. Um, for example, they, <laughs> um, but they've got a full TV crew, of probably thirty people, um, constantly on on board to do this. And again, this is this is one of the things I liked doing in old school was trying something and it failing, because as long as you failed and learned from it, that was a positive. And being able to be brave enough to try something, even as ambitious as uh, as Dead Man Mansions, had we been worried about it failing, it would never have happened. And it had problems, but it worked really well. Um, I think at the, at the end of it, and when we when people look back on it, they remember the the good times they've had, and even afterwards, um, uh, the CEO was taking it as a leading story point about the sort of really cool stuff that Jagex does when he was talking to other companies and uh, and recruitment were using it as a way to get more people into the company as well. So there was it had lots of benefits beyond what what we were doing, and when we say you know as a games company we created two big brother houses, we streamed live from it for a week. And then did a massive tournament with you know sixteen hundred people watching it, um, which again was ballsed up because you know when the, the bank of that um, the, the desks went down. Um, so if you remember um, that room fest, you had uh, on the stage, day, yeah. but you had yeah, two yeah. banks of um, of computers, and one of them crashed about two minutes before the uh, stream was about to start. And that oh, is because man. somebody had plugged a laptop into a power supply. Um, and that power supply got overloaded and crashed all the uh, all the computers. Um, it was just oh a single map. <laughs> yeah, like uh, dude, it it was absolutely amazing. That was like being in the house for the week, and then you go to Rune Fest, and it was crazy, man. You're just it was so cool. Like that that venue that we had then, it was like a massive row. This entire hall. Computer set up, we were all on there. And I just remember sitting down and looking out, and there's God, there had to be like a thousand people just like there. And then they were watching on the big like that right there. That had so much potential. I really hope that they actually do something with Dead Man Mode because I I had no idea it was making like a million for them every time they did it. That's insane. 
But it, yeah, it that makes, makes a lot more. That was peak. It wasn't on all of them. Um, but the peak oh. ones, there's probably about three or four that were around that number. Then it started paling off again. Do you, uh, like, do you happen to know about League's revenue at all? Like, did League's bring any revenue to RuneScape? Yeah, it did, do. You can see, you've, you've, do you know the website called Misplaced Items? I do not. There's, there's a website called Misplaced Items, and it captures the, um, uh, the amount of people logged in the game every 15 minutes. And mm -hmm. it captures both RuneScape, and it captures Old School, and it shows you both of them. Okay. Uh, side by side. And you can see when League's happened, there's a massive spike in... Uh, people playing, um, so yeah, it would have had, a, had an impact on it. But a really interesting website. Ah, brilliant! Right, so I have to keep that in mind. That's great to know. So, boys, I think we've been going now for like two and a half hours. Yes. And uh, I know that we have a very, very hungry, out of control mm -hmm. chat that want to ask yeah. Matt some yeah. questions. So, yes. I think what I'll do is I'll start with the first question, which I quite like. And uh, it says, do you think the Gower brothers would be happy with the way the old school RuneScape is today? Mm. That's a good one. I think that they, they would be okay with it. I don't think they'd be the... I don't think we're getting in the way of it. No, I think it's, it's still sitting pretty core to what they wanted to make, which is a, gay, a great storytelling game. Some of the most recent quests that have come out have been, you know, wonderful. I think raids have, have added a huge amount to it as well. Um, I think it is content they wouldn't necessarily have added themselves into it, but I think it's been done in a way that's true to um, what what the Gowers were trying to achieve long term for the game, which is just a great storytelling experience, and I still think it does that. In fact, there's 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 limited MTX bonds. I think are, are a necessary evil, um, and then you get the odd thing that flows through from uh, Prime, um, Twitch Prime. But that's that. I think is is acceptable. I think. Yeah. Um, I think if I was them, I'd like to see more openness. For mind you, who are they to talk about it? They were not very open at all when they were talking about the game. Um, but they, they probably want to see more openness about um, from from Jagex to the community. And uh, but I think other than that, I, th I think they'll probably be all right with it. Nice. Yeah. Should we all just pick one uh, Q and A then? Rice, you can go next if you got a question from chat. Oh no, it's fine. You guys. No. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I read a question <laughs> saying, "Did the uh, demo mode mansions what? smell like Doritos and Mountain Dew?" <laughs> I wouldn't dare go into them. I was, I was too afraid to walk into them afterwards. <laughs> so, um, Rice, what they smell like? It just, dude. It was just a very, very stinky mansion. Sweaty was gamers, it? dude. I, I think one of my fucking favorite memories from the demo mansions. Right, the best part about it was that we were all together. Okay, like you know, all of us together. It was so surreal being next to Alfie, and you got sick nerd in the room next to you. And we would always go downstairs. We ate out every single night because Jagex paid for it. So it's just like, yo, let's buy 200 pounds worth of Domino's tonight, boys. Let's do it. And uh, <laughs> we'd go downstairs, we'd get our food, and we'd usually sit there and chat and, like, talk about, you know, how the demo mode's going and stuff. And I just remember, like, sick nerd coming downstairs with all of us. And this guy is such a sweaty player. He literally got a plate, grabbed a couple slices of pizza, and was like, see you later, boys went straight back upstairs to play dead man mode like he had Zero. no time to talk to anybody <laughs> he was the, the thing is right we played for the same amount of time on the first day he had double the amount of xp that, as i did double like he were was you at just, silk stalls or what were you doing i i don't know what i was doing he i, I don't <laughs> he know I can't pizza. <laughs> yeah yeah jags his credit card just buying shit <laughs> on Dude, eBay. Was, Mommy's was, credit card? Jag is his credit card. There, there's <laughs> nothing better. There's nothing better than going out to see Jag X and then you go out for food and they're just like, you can have whatever you want. And I'm just like, yo, I'll have that fillet of steak that's 50 quid and I would never buy in my life. <laughs> Let me have that. <laughs> so um, I got another question here, which I would like to know the answer to as well. Uh, will Matt be attending future Rune Fest? Yeah, I plan to if there is another Rune Fest. He's probably going to overthrow like the hierarchy at the room first. Was this years canceled or are they not having one? I assume so. I've not heard of it. So, hmm. <laughs> yeah. This has happened, but I can't I imagine think it. All those events, conventions aren't going until next year. Yeah. yeah. God, it just keeps getting worse, man. 
That was bad. Mm-hmm. Right, Mitt, you got a, any questions, Nick? A lot of these questions are pretty. I love my chat, most, man. Most of the questions not... have already been asked, uh, answered yeah. already. In the pretty yeah. much a lot of. I, I'm skip. I'm skipping a couple because we've covered some of it. But I got one here, uh, which is kind of interesting, and I probably know the answer to it. He says, "Are streamer accounts more closely monitored for RWT than usual accounts?" Very sus that some of this gold that disappears, Mustangs and all that. From some of their banks after a stake in stream slash high risk stream stream. So he's he's basically asking like, do streamers get privileged when it comes to RWT? Um only if you get a no, split, right? It's, 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 there's, you know, the only sort of extra protection, uh there's not really even protection itself. There'll be a comment on any um high high profile streamer's account that says content creator's account that says this is this person's account. Be careful if you get any uh, password requests into it. But that's, that does absolutely nothing whatsoever, um, because you should be careful when a password request comes in for any account. Mm -hmm. um, but that's that's probably the only only difference that's out there. Um, as for, to be fair, the the your high the high um, your your big content creators are probably more at risk of being caught if they do something wrong, because somebody will know they have done, and then they will uh, shout about it to Jagex. So if we look at uh, what happened to Emily four or five years ago, where she said in her chat, um, I real world traded once, uh, Reddit suddenly said, oh my God, she haven't got to real world traded, ban her, ban her, get rid of her, she doesn't deserve to play the game. They didn't like her anyway. Um, the a conversation that happened in the office was, we've got everybody shouting that she real world traded. I was like, right, okay, what do we do with any account that we get this information from? It's like, well, we'll probably give them a weak ban. I was like, well, there you go. You don't treat these people any more differently. The only difference is that what they do comes to light more quickly. Um, so if any of you guys have admitted on this stream that you've been real-world trading... Sorry, Rachel. And... That's a week. Oh, no. That's a week. <laughs> Chain week. <laughs> it's all but over. That, that's the only sort of impact that really happens. Yo, look, gonna... they, can, they can ban my RuneScape for your account because technically that's where it took place, but not my old school ones, please. Hey, I haven't hey. done anything naughty on those accounts. I'm going to start some hate threads on Reddit. It's, it's going to be longer than a week, buddy. I'm uh, <laughs> well, look, I, on my side. At least, at least I was a productive member of society, dude. I got my uh -huh. driving license and I went and got a job at Tesco like delivering food to people, talking to people, being nice and, you know, smile on my face, knocking at the door. Where would you like your 100 kilos of water in your top yeah. floor flat? Like, where do you want this going? <laughs> There's yeah, a lot I worse I could have done with it. I suppose the interesting thing is what's happened to Randy recently. That's an interesting Ooh. point. Yeah, so right. We can, we can have... talk about that. We're actually going to have yeah. Rendy on the podcast next month. He is um, completely down for it. Sadly, I, I DM'd him. He's, uh, I don't want to say too much, but he's having a hard time right now just in general. Yeah. So, yeah, but he, he said he's down to come on and talk about it. So what's your take on that then, Matt? Just some brief I mean, It feels to me that a whole bunch of assumptions, and I, I don't know the truth, so I can only go from what's been said. So obviously Jagex will put out a statement, Rendy's said his piece. Um, it feels like those two need to get together and talk it through, find out what's going on, because they both seem certain of what's going on. And I wonder if assumptions have been made on what the data actually means, which isn't quite true or can be um, explained away, or maybe it's Rendy that doesn't um, understand what he's done and Jagex have a different view on it, but that conversation feels like it needs to happen. Um, I remember doing a uh, conference once where I was uh, on a panel about how to deal with um, content creators. And one of the questions I got asked was, uh, what do you do if you've got a content creator doing something you don't want them to do, which is damaging your brand? And I said, well, the first thing you need to do is talk to them about it. That's the thing. You don't just send them a message. You don't uh, send them a letter. You don't send lawyers around their house. You phone them up and you say, hey, mate, there's this thing's going on, we're a bit worried. Can we just hear your side of it, please? We need to make sure we're, we're all happy and friends still. And had that have happened um, before he got banned, I d none of this would have happened. Um, mm -hmm. I, it would be a non-issue. He would probably still have his accounts. Jaggers would understand a bit better. Um, or he wouldn't have his accounts, but he'd, he'd understand why. Um, and when he gets blown up into a public debate, you know, it's very difficult to find the answer. But I think that's just a, a bit of bad management from... Um, yeah, how to look after your influencers, but I, I mean, you could probably tell me this. I mean, is is, is does Jagex look after you guys all right? 
Nah, breaksy. <laughs> Mostly, I mean, yeah. Breaks me to get a little. Well, <laughs> I mean, th- well, they send me, bro. Listen, I'm, I'm moving houses at the moment, right? <laughs> and for real, like, I've had to take all of my clutter to my dad's house because I ain't got room for it. And I, there's like 30 boxes over there, and I reckon at least five or six of them is just filled with like RuneScape T-shirts that I'm <laughs> never gonna wear. I must just have them. It's just like nice. It's just, <laughs> must be it's nice. Just a full box. It's huh? like sent. By the way, I Matt, bet you got your name was, on there and everything. Huh? Uh, dude, 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 me, me and my, me and my partner were looking through my clothes and like trying to throw stuff out that doesn't fit. And I straight up was picking up shirts and I was like, "It's got my name on it. Keep it." I was like, "Put it in the box. We'll store that." Out. <laughs> Bro, but, I um, thought Racy was gonna say, "Yo, Jagus helps me move my stuff from one house to another." Yeah, <laughs> they, they've got like <laughs> RC out there <laughs> packing <laughs> boxes. I, I, listen, I, I, I genuinely like in terms of Jagex looking after me. Uh, yeah, they, they've done a fantastic job. There's stuff yeah. in the content creator Discord that I we can't talk about. By the way, I've seen it. They're doing a lot to help creators. Well, they're um, doing better I, nowadays, but yeah. yeah. Um, I, I have no complaints, man. Like Jesus Christ, one time they really wanted me to be somewhere and they got a bloody, uh, like a Mercedes, a really nice Mercedes to come and pick me up and they drive me to Cambridge. It was like two and a half hour drive in a taxi. And I was sat there talking to the taxi bloke and I was like, you know, he could obviously tell I'm quite down to earth. And he was like, what's this all about? And I was like, oh, it's a tournament I'm going to. And he was like telling me how much they paid for it. And he was taking me back the next day as well. And I was just like, oh my fucking God. I was like, probably I could have just cash got, prize. <laughs> I was like, I could have just got the trade up. Like I'm not fussed. Bro, you know? bro but, Rigsby, out of all the content creators, you're the chosen one. Yeah. But like, no, here's the, here's the thing though, right? The only reason that I have been selected to go to things in the past, and, you know, I'm not as popular as I once was. I probably won't get invited back unless I get my numbers up. But it's because I'm in the UK. Like, it's simple. Like, if you guys are in the UK, I don't know so much about Mint because apparently he rubs the J-Mods the wrong way. But I'll, yeah, rub, that's what I'll rub them any way they want for a T-shirt, all right? <laughs> do, just, do you want to tell, tell Matt what no. this is all about, oh. by the way? Oh, I'm just trolling, <laughs> it. Just say your It's piece. okay. No, it's okay. I I actually wanted to bring up some more serious matter on kind of creators and um, kind of how they're made martyrs sometimes. Like, is martyr the right word for Rendy? Uh, made an example, I guess, out of these glitches that come out because it's not the first time that a kind of creator has taken the fall for one thing. Uh, just one example: my friend Bonesaw, Bonesaw Banff, Nathan, uh, doing the Iron Man glitch, oh, which fair. wasn't a glitch. But what you, what would you do is you go to the rune shop and you'd sell runes to the shop and then on your Iron Man it was crafting it was just seaweed yeah you would just buy them right so you're spending your own money yeah. the shops that at the time weren't split up for Iron Man shops you know so you you would have to do that and uh, he did that to I don't know ninety crafting and the next day he was banned and there was a whole post on it so I feel like there is a lot of ways where yeah Rakey the golden child over here a little jealous but I am also so proud of what he's done get some yeah. benefits but a lot of content creators get turned into martyrs you know just like hey you do this we'll, we'll do what we did to that guy right it's happened uh more than that i just don't have any other examples but i i, I know yeah, I, mean, I don't necessarily think that's true i think what yeah. would the process would have been that um iron men were abusing this bug to, uh we decided that it was a bug and anybody who abused it over whatever level would get banned from doing it or de ironed or whatever the, the, the <clears> thing <throat> yeah um, yeah. And then we would have gone through the list and said, right, okay, there's some big names in here, so we just need to be prepared for the fallout from them, and then we just treat them all exactly the same. Um, yeah, we yeah very, you see, you see it, initially, right, initially when that happened, it was so abrupt, you know, it was like almost like almost out of nowhere, right? But like it was like, okay, okay, all right, they're serious, you know. They made an example out of him, and then you know people backed off from that. And and honestly though, throughout the years though, they've been so lax with that stuff, like Iron Man. There's there's been a lot of stuff going on, you know, where it's been fixed now, but nobody got the iron, you know, for doing things like yeah. uh, using using other accounts to like drag mobs in, into barrages or like using accounts to help kill bosses so that, you know, the main main iron man can get the drop. Like there's those things have been happening a while. Now it's like mm-hmm. most of it's fixed, but like none of them have ever gotten that level of punishment that Bonesaw yes. did, you know, which I yeah. think is rather unfair in the sense that. If you treated it to that level before, why are you so lax about it now? You know, 
right? They probably before. learned from their mistakes. They probably realized there's yeah. a less punishing way to go about this. And, you know, on that line of logic with punishing players, like, I don't think that, and I'm a content creator myself, I don't think content creators should be, like, exempt from breaking no. rules and being banned. It's like, I, I actually, I will preference what I'm about to say regarding Rendy with, I haven't actually watched his video, okay? But I do know that he's breaking rules in game by abusing bugs. And mm. I instantly, and I, I can't wait to talk to Rendy about it and hear what actually happens. But like, as soon as I hear that he's breaking rules by breaking the game and doing bugs, like logically, I'm just like, okay, so he was breaking the rules, abusing bugs, and got banned, and now he's angry. And I'm just like, I don't get it. Maybe I'm too black and white, well, but like, I, I need to Randy's, know more context. Speak on Randy's behalf, right? Because I don't want to get 100% into this. We got to save that for the next podcast, but... Uh, he did go over in his video that he was doing it on an account that it really didn't affect RuneScape, and if bugs and glitches were to happen, <clears> there was like a line saying that as long as they weren't harmful or or malicious, right? In, in the that the thing is, so, dude, it opens I'm not defending him, box. but that that's the trouble with it, right? It kind of opens up that box where it's like, okay, so if he's allowed to abuse these bugs, everyone seeing that's going to be like. Okay, well, I guess we're allowed to abuse bugs to a, a certain degree. And then what happens from there? You you end up getting bloody room like bot clients. I don't know. Like, I, I just feel <laughs> well, like... Well, that's a jump, but yeah, pretty much, right? You know, it it's like things just get escalated. Yeah. And it's like there has to be that line drawn in the sand. And I think that Matt's completely right. I think that, you know, even now at this point, they should work on repairing that relationship between Rendy and Jagex because there's there's clearly a lot of resentment between the two or at least what I'm seeing from Rendy. So mm. they just need to chat because like Jagex are usually quite reasonable and it's like it, it's hard to side like I find it hard to side with Rendy when you know it's like who do I trust more? The person whose word I'm believing or the company that are backing it up with proof and looking at data. Well, let's and not, I let's just, not get I just too towards deep. that. Until we get Rendy on, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, yeah. we, we can talk, we can talk about moon. it more then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I don't want fine. to get us all, hot, all heated yeah. right now. Don't say Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. But, but do you know what? I will say this. Speaking on this subject, I think one of the biggest issues is that, like I said earlier, there's not a head leader at Jagex right now which is addressing this. Because I imagine if Matt was there right now, there'd probably be like an old Screenscape live stream or something directly talking about this instead of like almost a passive aggressive blog post, which is like, if you want to talk about something, but like, yeah, because it doesn't mention his name, but it's clearly <laughs> about him. Passive. And I dislike that to such a degree. It's like, it needs to be more direct. It needs to be spoken about clearly and honestly. And it just needs to like, all the cards need to be on the table. And they definitely need to try and repair that relationship because, you know, at the end of the day, it's like, you don't want Rendy feeling bad about what he's done and you don't want Jagex to feel bad about losing a content creator. And, you know, I don't know. I need to hear more from Rendy's side as well. I need, yes. to, I need to hear the whole story. I'm well, looking I, I don't, forward to that. I don't even want to hear what happened until Rendy actually I tells think, us what happened. Yeah, I think, I think behind the scenes, there's definitely a bit of a disconnect between the people that like executes the decision to ban accounts and then also the community people mods that directly talk to their creators like for example mod bolton right he's like a a community mod that i've talked to before but i just don't think that he and the people that you know do the decisions they're they're like closely that formal with each other you know it seems i mean more so more so like from a business point of view that all they do is kind of talk to each other from a business point of view, not like from a like a teamwork point of view, you know? Maybe right. what we should do is when we have yes. Rendy on, we should get another J mod on that dealt with this case and we can just well, be like, yo, you guys should chat about this. Maybe we can just we'll be just a fly be... on the wall. <laughs> maybe we'll just do ah, Rendy first, because yeah. my boy is in a bit of a crazy situation and ask him about that, right? Because if I was in his shoes, uh, I would probably not be handling it as well. Yeah, right? yeah, I yeah. Think he's handling yeah. It. Not, we shouldn't he... be doctor filling it, you know, yes, by getting dude. somebody else. Especially Rakesy doctor filling it over here. Yeah, yeah, we can't do <laughs> dude, that. Dude, hey, listen, mate, I'm I'm pretty fair, dude. I like to listen <laughs> to both sides of the story. I'm just, I'm just, I'm kind of black and white in that sense. I'm like, hey, you're breaking the rules, and then you're upset you got bans. I, it doesn't make sense to me. So I need to know more. But that's just me. 
Yeah, yeah. Now let's get Randy in first, you know. And then yes, that's it's going to be a good now. podcast. <laughs> I'm mm-hmm. looking forward to it, man. And listen, I haven't got anything against Rendy, and I don't even know like the full context. So I, I'm looking forward to hearing this uh, this whole thing out and seeing what's said about it. So you know, right, uh, boys? Do we have mm-hmm. any more questions for We've Matt? Or Matt, for... do you have any more questions? I want to save it for part two. You know when? Oh, yeah. You I, think, you, th- hey, you think that Matt's coming on again after you were 20 minutes late, Bree? 20 <laughs> minutes late? What do you mean? <laughs> What do you mean? Oh, have, you, have you read the, the comment that I made to you uh, on on, on uh, Twitter? No, no. One sec. Let me let me see. It was it was making me laugh. You were typing this out. Yeah. He, wait. What did you say? I assume you'll send me an invite when you're ready or something. And you said I always found trying to get content creators together was like herding cats. <laughs> no, it's we're we're a miracle group, oh, okay? So... Like we've gotten better. It used to be like literally we'll say like all right, let's meet up at three, and then we will literally meet up at three thirty or four. <laughs> now yeah, it's like usually on time that... or maybe five minutes late, you know, ten minutes late. I, I blame I blame Google's conversion times. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. Like That's if I say eight PM, if I say eight PM, they're here at nine. That's it. And they're like, Oh, dude, what do you mean you told us this time? I'm like, it says eight PM my time. This is the time. It's not an hour from now. It's right now. Huh. It happens like every single week, man. I swear to God. But yeah. Bro, anyways. I will let you have this. But earlier in the podcasting days, you, my friend, were nowhere to be seen uh. at least an hour before every podcast. So <laughs> I'll give you it for now. But you were a tyrant. I know. Back in the day. I know. I, I know. I know. I'm not one. No, to don't speak, worry. Rick but... sees much better nowadays. You yes. know, I, now I it's right. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, mate, I literally I ended my stream at ten to eight. Ran downstairs. Mrs. made me food, so I literally sat there in the blistering heat, scoffing it in. Came back up. I'm like, Mint, where's Re? Mint, like <laughs> Re's offline. No response for like twenty hours. I'm like, Pulse give me a ring. No, where's he too? <laughs> <laughs> and then we start the podcast and we do the intro and it takes re really like five seconds to respond after i do my piece i'm just like is he awake is, is this is this man here right now yeah, just call me yeah, coffee call, call ass. <laughs> and no, i don't I, right. I set too many alarms and one of them got turned off so boys sorry. boys we're getting off subject all right this is yeah. a, a great podcast matt seriously thank you for all the insight and knowledge uh m- might be one of my favorite really just yeah. having yeah. you on man Pleasure. Matt, we but, would love, love to have you on again, mate. We really would. Yes. Yeah, honestly, yeah. like M- Mr. Matt was probably one of the most influential J mods back when I used to follow the, you know, the the old school J mods for the first few years. You know, like mm-hmm. he made some bold moves. You know, said some bold things, but I just knew that he had really good intentions for the game, and it really did show. You know, to certainly yeah. he left a really good legacy, especially <clears> with like the MTX stuff and the, you know, a glimpse we were, of what we PvP were in good hands. Like. Yeah, for sure. Sure. That's wonderful. Right. Now I've really enjoyed myself, guys. And I'll, I'll happily come back. Happily yeah. come back whenever you want 1, me. Thousand likes. Come back next week. Matt, yeah. oh, Matt no, does stream. Week. Week. Matt oh, yeah. does stream, and he has a Twitter. And we'll leave all those links down below because he's still very much part of this community. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thanks. For yeah, what's your stream schedule like, Mister Matt? Oh yeah. My, my schedule. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is really interesting, okay, because um, when Rakesy got in touch, said, do you want to do this uh, this podcast with us? I was like, yeah, fine, any time's fine, just, just a shout when you want. And then it got to July, and suddenly my July got packed. Mm-hmm. Right? Every day I was doing something. The last two weeks I've been busy every single day. And I think this was, what, the the the, the, the first day I was free this month. It's been, <laughs> you know, I, was, I replied to her, I said, this is really weird because normally I don't fuck all. I just sit around and uh, <laughs> play games after work, and that's it. But no, not 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 in July. Um, so after today, I'm doing nothing for forever. Sweet, um, perfect. Yeah. Well, why don't you yeah. film a guitar riff for us before you? You know, we, we wrap it. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, I, I don't know if I could change my uh, mic on here. Hang on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how do I, I see those mic? guitars in the back. You know, like it, it must be played. Oh, that would dude. be in Discord settings and go to audio. Mm-hmm. Have my- By the uh, way, please. for anyone watching on YouTube, remember 750 likes, and Matt's going to come back and manually delete every single bot in old school <laughs> RuneScape. And a thousand likes, likes, and he'll come back and get rid of the Doodle Arena as yeah, well. He'll, he'll use his that? super cloud computing you know, expertise to uh, you know, compute all the bots out, out of the game. Two know, likes, five. you'll never see spam in Grand Exchange again. That's a guarantee. <laughs> 2k likes 
the girls that you buy, girlfriends that you buy in the G are actually girls. What the hell are you oh, buying? Oh, man. <laughs> Googling, right? <laughs> buying girlfriends, come on, you know. Bro, not not catfish. <laughs> what do you mean? What am I searching? That's not, hey, you keep mean. that to the Google history, bro. <laughs> what are you saying? Oh, man. Oh, Mintz never man. never saw a RuneScape girlfriend. He never had a RuneScape girlfriend. He wouldn't. Can poor. you imagine if he can play understand. the runes? Dude, imagine if he can play RuneScape on that thing. Pop out Harmony. <clears throat> sea Shanty too. Yeah, can you hear me all right, by the way? Good, yes. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She'd be good. She'd be good. Yeah, because normally I have, my, uh, I have a NVIDIA RTX mic, and that cuts out any sound. You can probably hear my fan as well now. Um, no, no. no, it's fine. No. It's good. Yeah, because normally it cuts out any sound, which isn't my voice. Uh, it's a really clever bit Yo, of tech. Somebody said you weren't tech savvy, but man just got proven wrong. <laughs> tech savvy? The man is literally talking about cloud computing, bro. <laughs> said, this man has the cloud in his head. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Right. yeah. Now, does any of this work? Yeah, make sure to visit ModMadK on his Twitch, though. Um, Was it twitch.tv slash ModMadK? Let me see, mate. I'll find out. I, I believe it was. Uh, real Matt K, all my things. Oh, are. real Matt K. There you go. That's the... Yep. We'll, we'll link all of his uh, social medias on underneath, boys. Make sure you check him out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God, I missed the. Uh, I remember when Mod Matt K was doing the community events, spawning oh, yeah, like Armadale and killing it, and like everybody was getting killed on the other side of the fence. Do you that remember that, Ray? Oh, that was all. <laughs> Oh, that, was. <laughs> that was so good. All he had to do was create an invisible wall along that line. It would never have happened, and he didn't bother to do that. And so everything's going people. Oh my goodness! Let's make some big noises. Let's turn that off. Yo, Re, you've got like smoke puffing out by the side of you. Is that like a fan? Yeah, it's like a new technology, you know. No, I think Matt's got cloud, it as well. I need cloud, some of that. you know, cloud computing. That's where he gets his water. <laughs> I drink through vapor, you know, very efficient. He's gonna light it on fire and rift. Watch this shit. What, what, what now? What? What? <laughs> what are you gonna play, bro? I, I don't know yet. I haven't, I haven't figured that far out yet. Hang on. I guess something RuneScapey, probably. Right? RuneScapey. Okay. Oh, real mark. Oh, space. Ooh, my bad. Don't click on that. Yeah, we could do, mate, I could get my guitar and do a duo either. real quick. Crazy. You just sit right know. there. We don't want to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You right Dude, there. I could I can play one song on the guitar and you it's been probably else. a year. What hot cross buns? It <laughs> no, it's uh it's actually a Bloodhound Gang song. The uh oh, do you know okay. the video which has mm -hmm. Bama Jaren and they have like a what was it? A banana car that goes through a tunnel. Fox yeah, the Mr. Mammal one, right? Yeah. No, not it's, it's a different one, but I can play oh. that one really well. That's about it. Solid. All right, Phoenix or Black Arm Gang, guys? I am Butchy Gang. Oh, I'm Phoenix. How's that sound? Does that sound all right? Oh, Wait. I can't hear it. You can't hear it. <laughs> just oh, about. Wow, it just does about. cut a lot. It does cut out a lot. Yeah, that's just that mic's changed. Yeah, maybe maybe you also have like the um the background noise remover on Discord too. That's the thing. It might be a thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's next to the disconnect. Like you can turn it off. It's called crisp or something. Okay, that's for it. right. So I'm on the right mic according to this. Oh no, I couldn't hear that. <laughs> can you hear that? Barely, barely. I got yeah. faded out. It's so hard. Dang, that's crazy. Jeez. Uh, noise suppression, there we go. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Turn that off. Oh, there we go. How about that? How about oh, that? Yep, you're yeah, you're ready. You're ready, Foxstar. You are ready. Ooh. Dang. Okay. Good warm up. Good warm up. <laughs> God, that's not a warm up. You think it's an nice hour to warm up? That was all of Sea Shanty for Saints. Yeah, right, anyway. Dang, that's a famous song. <laughs> <laughs> Get it 
it right in a minute. It's what happens when you read music at the same time, you see. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I'm nervous at all. I was told when I was getting taught guitar that you've oh, mastered nice. the guitar when you can play uh, Stairway to Heaven. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's probably true. <laughs> <laughs> I've never tried playing Stairway to Heaven. Should we have a look, see what it says? I think, uh, I think it's it says. a lot of hand movement for that one. I, I never nailed um, it. Not quite. Oh, not quite boy. there. So one of the things I really enjoy is on my on my channel, if you spend points to actually get me to play a song, and the thing that I enjoy the most is when people choose a song that I've never played before. Yeah, learning And uh, I just pull up the music and, and try playing it. And uh, Oh, my God, what's going on there? Okay, so we've got... Uh... Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, Yeah, probably need a bit of practice on that one. Yeah, that's hey, uh, it. Kind of sounds like it's there. Ne here. Next time yeah, yeah. that we have you, Matt. Next time we have you on, I want you to be able to play that perfectly. <laughs> With your just teeth. know it, memorize it. Fucking Shouldn't be a problem. Easy. He's said no problem. Yeah. What a leisure, Can kind of do a bit of um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Dragon Force. The beginning oh, of uh, Through the Fire and the Flames was something oh, I, I, I okay. learned. Uh, Let's hear it. Let's go. But my fingers need warming up. <laughs> <laughs> this might not go very well. We shall see. It's yeah. yeah, that's that's that, that's the beginning bit. Yeah, it's pretty good. That's Stay. enjoyable. That's yeah, enjoyable. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then you then you do the bit after, which is a lot easier than the beginning bit, because the uh, the bit where he goes um, nice and nice, isn't it? Goes. Uh, uh, this bit. Oh, yeah. And so on. Yeah. It's a lot easier yeah, than the yeah. first bit because it's just just all right hand. Anyway, we're not here to talk about guitar playing. Yeah, yeah. that's a good <laughs> hey. side bit though. But the real thing is, you know, what do you want him to play? <laughs> in the car. Right, should I 750 should I likes, still? boys. We're almost at Let's end three it. hours. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. This it was, was a good one. Yeah. Matt, it was a pleasure, man. Anytime you're welcome to come back on, mate. No problem at all. I'll happily come back on.